Hello and welcome back to the Two Brits, One Yank podcast. Today I'm joined with not only my Brit. Sam, by the way, I'm just so excited. Very excited. <laughs> On the far side, the Yank, the resident Yank, as he likes to call himself resident now. Resident Yank, Karen and Kelly. And as you can see to my right, we are now the two Brits, one Yank and one Brazilian superstar. We even brought the flag as well, Luke. Lucas Covalan has joined us today. Welcome, Lucas. Thank you. Thank you very much. It's great to have you on. My first ever oh, guest as well. Indeed. I'm so excited. My palms are sweating. You know? <laughs> are, you, are you nervous? Are you nervous? <laughs> I'm nervous. Are you nervous? I'm more nervous giving the, the to podcast fit. here today than actually like the interview. Like, <laughs> <I think>, uh, <laughs> we have been saying, oh, Lucas, you are the first guest and all. So we are literally... So excited, so no pressure, bud. We've oh, got okay. no pressure. Okay. But you've got some great stories. The pressure's on us. I'm a bit nervous. I'm You're very nervous. nervous. Yeah, I'm nervous. It's taken us... In fact, this is the first time I'm actually not nervous. No, I'm only a bit nervous because, you know, when things go wrong with us, it's all right. We yeah, can just sort true. it out. There's no one else. We can be here for three, four, ten hours. You know yeah, what I mean? Yeah, that's true. Whereas Lucas... And I don't understand what's going on anyway, so he's, he's the one that understands everything. <laughs> we were actually speaking about this before. Who is the most replaceable member of the Two Brits, One Yank podcast? And... It's out of the yank. Well, the yank, to be fair. No, to be, no, I said it was me because Sol knows what he's doing. And then obviously the name is Two Brits, One Yank. So we need the yank. Uh, that's what so I it's said. Me that's getting the, and it's me that's getting fired if, if, if there's anyone, you know. I said in uh, in the change room when we got in a fight, you know what? Good luck replacing the yank. <laughs> Good luck finding another yank in Maidstone. <laughs> but uh, no, to be fair, Boney, we're both pretty uh, expendable at the moment. Yeah. I, I'm not like, I've been frustrated today because... They've been setting things up. Obviously, we're not in the uh, two, uh, we're not in the, we're not in the coaching horses. We, Boney and Connor set something up for about thirty seconds. They realise they don't know how to do it. They say, "Sol, just sort this out for me, please." And they go, "Oh, I'm going on break." Yeah, I'm going no, on break. I had to go on break. It was getting too stressful. Man. And I was like, "Well, Lucas is going to be here in like twenty minutes. We need to at least sort some stuff out." Oh, I'm going on break. Boney came back from a break. We were done. He was like, "Oh." I'll go another break then. Yeah. <laughs> I actually pretended I was doing something in the bedroom, but I was just <laughs> it on my phone, on my Instagram and all. Oh, oh stuff, yeah. honestly. Uh, but f- before we get into, into Lucas' story and interview him, which is the first time we've ever interviewed anyone, so uh, excited for that. Mm. We do have to mention that we were visited by a very special guest. Man, this guy is a special guest. A very special guest. A special, special guest. We've already clickbaited him with the vlog, with the <laughs> vlog video, but we'll give him another shout out. Do you want to, do you want to mention who? The uh, one and only Nacho Gonzalez. Damn, you butchered Decent? that. Absolutely. That was I've been nice. trying. I've been trying to learn. I said, hey, Nacho Monreal was my favourite Nacho <laughs> until I met Mr. Gonzalez. And now, oh, what a guy. He even brought me in the Aquarius as well for all you Spanish viewers that may be watching this. It's my favourite, favourite drink. Oh, wow. Favourite drink. Have you had this, Lucas? Lucas played... <sighs> no, I don't want to reveal. We can say it. <laughs> okay, Lucas played in Spain for a couple of years. Did you ever try this when you was there? Maybe to change it like the outside, but I, I do remember. It is, it is different. I didn't notice that because it's the new yeah. recyclable bottle. Look, oh, okay. natural, yeah, natural yeah, treat, yeah. natural treat. I mean, let me just take Ooh. a little swig on camera. Wow. Nacho cares Maybe. about the this. Is SMR, Major SMR, respect. SMR, SMR gold. That was serious. Wow. <laughs> I just feel so energized now after that. Damn. Maybe it's not sponsored. Sponsor. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe they're new sponsor. Oh, yeah. The past. <laughs> right. Aquarius, hit me up. But no, Nacho <laughs> spent the weekend with us. He is used to watching Atletico and Real Madrid uh, back in Spain, but he mm. decided to come to the Gallagher and watch us play West at Supermare, mm-hmm. which was an absolute thriller. Yeah, an oh yeah, thriller. I couldn't think of anything. Like going from the Metropolitano to the Gallagher Stadium, I mean, <laughs> he like took you've a clip. reached it. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. It's unbelievable. He took a clip and put it on his Instagram story. I think the ball touched the ground two times in a 15 second clip. <laughs> so it's not exactly Tiki Taka, but you know, it's it's beautiful in its own right. We it is the, the real dub. world. We, got uh, the dub. we also have to shout out the one and only Gavin Hoyt and his children, mm-hmm. Carice, Dulcy and Amari. Mm-hmm. Gav was potentially going to be a guest as well as Lucas, but things didn't align. Um, so in a few weeks, hopefully we'll get the, the one and only Gavin Hoyt on. He's got some great stories mm-hmm. as the man to the side of me. And I think it's perfect time to, to get into it. Mm-hmm. One, one quick thing. Uh, when I was, uh, I told someone I would answer their question from last week and we didn't get around to it. When I was walking up the high street, I actually got stopped by a group of young kids on bikes and I asked them if they had a, sent in any questions and they had and I was devastated because it was one of the ones we didn't answer. So the question was, What's your best memory with the Maidstone United fans? And I'm honestly glad that we have Lucas Kovlin here to answer that. 
Oh, the best memory. Uh, obviously, I think it would be Ipswich, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, I agree, yeah. Uh, even Coventry, you know, it got to be like mm -hmm. five nil, but you know, you know, after the game, it, sick, it, it, was crazy. It, it didn't look like it got beat five nil. You know, yeah. like everyone just the stayed like till the, the end of the end. Like mm -hmm. uh, I remember <laughs> they closed in the stadium and then they were <laughs> there like celebrating <laughs> with the fans. They were trying to put us off. You yeah, I know. Yeah, was trying to put I was off. on crutches and some guy pushed me and I was like, "Excuse you," and then he was like, "Oh, I'm so sorry." And I was like, "Jesus <laughs> Christ, some hospitality this is." <laughs> it happened at Coventry as well. Before the game, I wasn't in the squad, so I went to go and see my my family and my parents. Parents, and I walked around and I got grabbed by security and he was like what are you doing here what are you doing here? I was like I'm, I'm a player and he was like okay okay, mate. okay. I was like they were absolute <laughs> jobs really? worth so I can't lie hey, the fans were unbelievable mm. yeah the, everyone behind the scenes was unbelievable but the security at Coventry was uh, not stressful night mid so United coming to town we're massive facts, everywhere we go I guess facts, facts. straight facts I think I think the Ipswich though like although Coventry was so good yeah for the atmosphere for well for everything I just think that Ipswich when nobody expected us to win that game wow and to to do that was just well i've said it in the podcast before like it was just incredible like the celebrations with the family the goals that were scored yeah. madness <laughs> um yeah for me that's probably my my favorite memory with the fans because that was that was really special mm. so that's the answer to to the young man's question you didn't even yeah. know his name did you We'll cut this out. We didn't even know his name. I should have looked at the username. <laughs> I'm not gonna lie. But yeah. were, you, were you not just asked his name when you saw him in person? That's there big were, time. That's no, there were, big there time. were a lot of them. There were 15. No, there were a lot of them. There were, yeah, there so were one came children. over, shook my hand, and then I got his name, but he wasn't the one that asked the question. It was like 15 kids on bikes. I was like, kind of got intimidated. Yeah. <laughs> you actually thought <laughs> you were gonna get rushed. Yeah. Yeah. Was it near KFC? You got to be careful when you go around. Yeah. KFC. I had the AirPods in, <laughs> yeah. and I, was, I saw these kids looking at me and coming over. I was like, no, <laughs> <laughs> I have no money. <laughs> right, should we go into it then? <laughs> yeah. Shall I? Shall I? Uh, Lucas, right. Before we start, now we've we had the same question for each other before we started our individual episodes, and it was, what was your first memory as a footballer? But for those that don't know who you are, yeah. can you just give us a, a little background on yourself? Who? Uh, well, I'm Lucas Kovalin, uh, currently a Maidstone United goalkeeper. Mm -hmm. And, um, you mean currently? <laughs> <laughs> He's looking for a move on this. <laughs> He's using the two hey, one game. is going to be fuming if we, <laughs> we put this out. He already doesn't like us doing it. And now Luke is trying to get a move. Uh, well, uh, I don't know about my future, you know. Uh, uh, so... Jesus Christ. <laughs> this is not how this was supposed to go. <laughs> uh, yeah, well, I start as a... Um, Skateboarder instead of uh, oh. <laughs> Tony Hawk. <laughs> actually, yes, actually, uh, that that was my passion when I was younger. Uh, actually, being skateboarding since I was young, um, mm -hmm. with my friends uh, after school, you know, mm -hmm. uh, I I was not even like the um, study type, you know. I mm -hmm. always wanted to just skateboarding like mm -hmm. after school, and uh, that that was the the cool bit. But then. You know, uh, as a Brazilian, uh, is in the blood, so everyone wants to be a footballer, and uh, I was not different, you know. Um, so the dream was there, and um, I said, like, who knows? Uh, so I started training, like, mm -hmm. obviously, uh, we training, um, we we playing with friends. Uh, however, I got the opportunity, even, like, uh, when I was nice skateboarding, it was, like, uh, playing football, mm -hmm. and, um, uh, you know, the things just started coming more serious when uh, I, I reached, I think, um, uh, 13, 14 mm -hmm. years old. So that was when uh, things they started getting, like, serious. Uh, and that's yeah. when you, you said to yourself, this is what I want to do as a career, is it? Because, obviously, you play with your friends for the um, enjoyment and stuff, but... Yeah, um... I mean, f it's difficult to to just say like, oh, I want to do this like as mm -hmm. as a career, you mm -hmm. know, because uh, we know like uh, the amount of footballers that like we have in Brazil mm -hmm. and uh, the chances are like just like minimum mm -hmm. for you to, to become course. a footballer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I I just had that in mind, obviously, and I just said like, who knows? Uh, I I I was always a, a hard worker, and then I said like, I if 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 it works, it's, it's just like. For us, mm -hmm. uh, 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 everyone like uh, you know um, that is just being supporting me like mm -hmm. the whole way. Mm -hmm. um, was it? Were you always? Did you always want to be a goalkeeper? Because obviously, when I think of Brazil, I don't necessarily think of keepers straight away. Mm -hmm. Obviously, there's been some greats in the past: Julio Cesar, um, Dida, two best keepers in the world right now. 
Yeah, Lucas, oh, yeah, yeah. Lucas yeah. Cobble and another <laughs> second. <laughs> <laughs> and Neto, we'll get on that. <laughs> and I probably think of players like Ronaldinho, uh, Robinho, Neymar, obviously, in more recent history. Yeah, no. Um, I, th- I mean, I think it just happened to be a keeper again. Uh, I was always like uh, playing friends as an outfield play, outfield player, mm-hmm. and uh, you know in Brazil we play a lot of futsal as well. Mm-hmm. Uh, we just have like this technically, uh, and then it's like so sharp, like mm-hmm. you know moving it. Uh, but again, uh, was one of my my coaches at the time. Like he seen like uh, my body, uh, my body shape, and then he's just like, you might be good for for a goalkeeper, you know. And uh, I said like. Let me give it a try. Yeah, mm-hmm. and uh, I he just goes like, ah, oh, you had a good training session today as a goalkeeper. Why don't you like uh, pursue it as you know as a career? Mm-hmm. Like I I don't know, um, I don't know. I never thought of being like a goalkeeper, but he said like, well, I I can see it. Like you have a future. So I. I did believe him at the time. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know if he was lying or he just needed a goalkeeper. At that time. Yeah. <laughs> just, yeah. I, just needed play, keeper. Okay, I feel like yeah. that's how it happens a lot yeah. of the time. It's either like the kid was going to get cut from the team yeah. or the goalkeeper didn't turn or the, up. Or the, you're, the, the, you're the, the younger brother. So you've always yeah. got to go and yeah, go yeah. for your big brother well, or something. I think you at know? the time I was like the tallest, mm-hmm. you know? But mm-hmm. then he said like... Lucas, I think you're going to be a good goalkeeper. <laughs> just go. He didn't want you outfield. That's not nice. Well, I'll tell you what, that's some insight from the coach, though. It might be by chance, but yeah, he looks like no. a genius now. Yeah. I know. Thanks. Uh, well, thank you for Carlinhos. Uh, well, he passed, like, long ago. Mm-hmm. Uh, but, you know, that was the name of the coach, uh, mm-hmm. Carlinhos. Brazilians and, uh, just have the coolest names, don't yeah. they? Car- <laughs> Carlinhos, <laughs> come on. <laughs> yeah. Uh, anyway, and then... From there, I think uh, I truly believed what he said. <laughs> so, you know, I just tried in, I started training harder and harder. Mm-hmm. And then I said, okay, I, I do have a chance in mm-hmm. here, you know. So that's when things just started coming more, become more serious now. Mm-hmm. Uh, when I was like 15, 16 then. Mm-hmm. When you're, is that the age that you started to go to like bigger academies then? Age 15, 16? Yeah. So I started at Atletico Paranaense and I got released when I was uh, 15, I was not as high as they wanted me to be. Mm-hmm. So they saying like, I will release you guys. You, you, well, I'm releasing you because uh, uh, you're not as tall as uh, we want. Like, so the goalkeepers to be tall. Mm-hmm. And uh, at the time I was, I was not tall at all. Um, I don't know if they do the checkup like in, in here, but in Brazil they do something, the, the growth bone, yeah. Oh, Which, really? Yeah, they do so, some sort of uh, check. So it is like a uh, on the wrist. Mm-hmm. And uh, they do that in Brazil a lot because when you say like, I'm 14, and mm-hmm. then you look at the guy and then he looks ah. like 19 already, you know? Mm-hmm. Right, okay. So they check it through like an x-ray, like in yeah, the wrist. Yeah, so it's yeah. like a, for the growth bone. It's, it's like, yeah, right. yeah, yeah. yeah. I think here what they do is they, they use grandparents and they use your parents and they have like this software. Because okay. when I was at Southampton, they had to get my grandparents' height, everything. And they can get it within within an inch either way. Really? Yeah. Okay, so they yeah. just they can just work out how tall you're gonna be. Okay. Supposedly. I was told I was gonna be six one. So. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Didn't work in, 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 in the states, it's a bit less accurate. <laughs> <laughs> Still waiting. Yeah. Is is that why you was released then? They took this measurement from your. No. So I was released, and then I, my mom and dad they were like interested, like to know like mm-hmm. why you like you so because my dad is tall, my mom oh, is like quite okay. tall as well. Uh, no, my mom is sure. Like, <laughs> but I, but uh, anyway, they were like interested, just interested to see like, am I gonna be tall or not? Yeah, yeah. yeah. So they did this test, and I was fourteen at the, uh, fourteen fifteen at the time, and it says like uh, my growth bone that I was twelve, so I was like so delayed. Like, oh, yeah, okay. yeah. So, so you had so, all so that growing to do still. Yeah, and they so, still released you. No, yeah. he he got contract. Yeah, he but- goes in with the. The uh, <laughs> yeah. coach. I mean, yeah. could get the word. So then, out, then the um, the woman that checked, like the time, the, the, the doctor said, uh, "Okay, uh, so your son is gonna be uh, six foot uh, three, six foot four. Mm-hmm. And then, like, okay, my mom didn't believe it at the time, and then she was very accurate. Like uh, today, I'm like six three. So yeah, um, it must be said as well that you come from a, a sporting family yes yeah yes. from a sporting yeah. family your mum your mum is a fencer yes uh, she's a fencer and my dad is a basketballer yeah yeah oh, really been, I didn't yeah even know yeah he's been uh, playing basketball for pff, ages like he had to stop uh, he had too many surgeries in his knee 
Really? And yeah, you know, uh, now the impact and everything. Yeah, I imagine. Uh, so uh, when he retired from basketball, we could see like that he was like so sad. He was just like so lost, you know. Uh, really? And that was like when he was like 65, like, really? you know, yeah. Uh, did he did he do that professionally? No, professionally? no, like more like a university. Cool. And then, yeah. Uh, yeah. And then after he, he was always involved like into the university uh, sports and mm -hmm. uh uh, nowadays, he's uh, he's involved uh, with, with the uni university as well. Uh, he's uh, the vice president president of of my state. Wow! Um, so he just goes around and then it's like the Olympic Games for cool. with the university. So mm -hmm. I don't know if they have something around. Uh, it's like a box. Yeah, it's similar. Yeah. Yeah, it's yeah. called box here. Yeah. Yeah. So it, it, it is cool because I mean Brazil is so big, and then uh, first of all we have like the the regional like the states, mm -hmm. and then after like whoever wins the let's say football just like get selected to go into the national one so it's just like wow. yeah it's, it's a big big thing so uh but yeah uh, mom is a, fa a fencer um my sister she was uh playing faust ball yeah i don't faust think uh, people heard much about cool it. sport he was showing me <laughs> is this the, i was gonna give the viewers a background but i don't know what that is either so it, it's a mix of like football and volleyball yeah oh, it's cool. unbelievable Really? It's, it actually like he was showing me like the best plays or whatever yeah. the like athleticism that you need to have for the right, sport okay. is unbelievable yeah is it is it big in brazil is it huge no it's not quite big because right okay you, you know like uh, well, i mean brazil is just so big and mm -hmm. then uh, culture wise it's just mm -hmm. like uh, massive like you have like all the cultures like in the world like inside brazil so uh i'm from the south uh from curitiba and uh, we've been colonized most of the uh, by Europeans. Mm -hmm. So this sport is from uh, German, mm -hmm. from from Germany. Mm -hmm. And it, it's I mean, like when she said like I'm gonna play play like Faust ball, it's just mm -hmm. like everyone's just like what what is that? You know? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> no one knows like what was that. But then I remember showing you the clips, and you're like, oh yeah, it's like a volleyball, but then the ball can bounce, and then it's in the grass. Yeah, uh, yeah. Uh, no, we'll see if we can so get any cool. clips. We'll out. Get a little yeah. Clip. yeah, that sounds so yeah. cool. But yeah. Having said that, though, you said obviously in the south it was colonized by Europeans. Yeah. You're actually Italian or from Italian descent, aren't you? Yes. Uh, great grandparents. Uh, they're from Italy, and uh, that's why I'm here as well. Uh, it helped me so much because really? uh, I have Italian passport, mm -hmm. and uh, well, uh, now we're out of the Brexit, but then uh, <laughs> I came before it, uh, mm -hmm. so it was very useful for mm -hmm. for me as because mm -hmm. uh, you know uh, I, I don't think. Um, uh, Brazilian people, they just can come in here and just start working because they, yeah. they just have like visas. a work permit, like the visas and everything mm -hmm. is just like so complicated. So and now it's even harder, probably. So yeah, yeah, I know. Uh, but having an Italian passport was just yeah. like uh, so handy. Uh, I, I mean, uh, my mom, my parents, they they never know that uh, I was gonna use it uh, mm -hmm. to to come to Europe and then probably mm -hmm. like use it the, the Italian passport. Mm -hmm. But uh, I'm so glad that my mom did it. <laughs> so Lucas, give us a, a sort of background on how you got back into professional football after obviously being released. Yeah, uh, I mean, uh, there was club, there were clubs that mm -hmm. they'd be accepting me uh, at that time. That was a little bit short, but I still had the technique and the qualities mm -hmm. to be to be a goalkeeper. So uh, the club who accepted me was Trieste, mm -hmm. that's the name. And it's just like a development uh, club. They don't have a professional uh, right. uh, professional team. Right. And uh, from there, I just started developing more and more and more. And uh, I stayed with them, I think, almost two years. And by, by that time, uh, I was much taller. Mm -hmm. <laughs> what age was you then? Um, that I was uh, 16, uh, cool. turning 17, uh, that I remember when uh, some scouts from uh, Vasco da Gama, they came nice. to watch the game. Mm -hmm. And uh, obviously, uh, they liked what they seen it, uh, what they produced in that game. And um, I've been selected to go to a trial in, in, in Rio, uh, in Vasco da Gama. And uh, I said, like, okay, it's cool, let's go to Rio. Uh, I never, like, left, like, my city at that point, like, you know. And how how far is that from from? So Curitiba south? to Rio is uh, two hours by plane. Let's say oh, wow. it's like uh, fourteen hours by car. So it's oh, really? yeah, oh, it's, yeah, uh, a big big difference. Big yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. So I said like, hey, everyone says cool things about Rio. Like uh, I know what well, everyone wants to know. Like of course, Rio, Rio, you know. Yeah. So I got there, 
and uh, it was not quite what I expected, you know. Really? Like, yeah, you know, the it was a third division team, uh, Vasco da Gama at the time. They were third but division. No, no, first, first division. Oh. oh, I thought you said third. I was gonna say that. Yeah. I know about them. Yeah. I was gonna say my ball now is really good if I know third division Brazilian <laughs> sides. No, yeah, so so they were first division, and the facilities were just like terrible. Really? Wow. Terrible, terrible. All my days, I was in a, a room. And it was like five bunker beds, and then there's like ten people just living in, in no, the room. Really, it was crazy, wow. crazy, real. Because uh, imagine, like uh, my my family, like we came from a, a good background and everything. Like I, I had my room, like uh, mm-hmm. you know, like uh, the house and everything. Mm-hmm. They just like changed the environment of mm-hmm. like ten lads. And the ten lads, they're just like, I mean, uh, Connor knows, like, I'm very, like, organized. And, uh, yeah. clean, oh, my God, it must be a nightmare for you. I was going to say, oh, for, no. for Mr. OCD, he would have been yeah. struggling. Did you give him, like, a, a route of, uh, what is it, a rotor, when oh, yeah. they had to, like, clean and stuff? <laughs> I mean, that when I was 17, tough. I think it was not as much oh, as I'm, oh, I it? am right now, you know? So, uh, must have been hell know. for you, Bob, when you walked and, through uh, the doors. We, the stadium of uh, Vasco da Gama is uh, São Januário, yeah? And is uh, is in the middle of like a favela, so mm-hmm. it's just like very close to like a community, like right, a, okay. yeah, like a rough, rough place. Mm-hmm. Okay, but it was the first time that I was just like hearing shots like every night. And then, Jesus, yeah. And then like people are like, "What? This is uh, normal for you?" No, and I'm like, really? <laughs> like, yeah, nah. This is oh, just relax, just sleep through it. It's like, what? What's going on in here? Yeah. So realistically, it wasn't even safe to go out where you. No, you. Um, I mean, they knew that we, we were footballers the players, there. Yeah. yeah, so they allowed us uh, mm-hmm. in uh, to the favelas. And mm-hmm. uh, the, I mean, people who live there, just like uh, they are like just normal people. They are mm-hmm. nice as well. You know, mm-hmm. there's uh, so many good people who lives in there as well. Mm-hmm. And uh, there's so many bad people who lives in there as well. You know, like anywhere. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. Um, but um, anyway, so we. I think I spent uh, two weeks in there. And uh, I remember the, the owner of Trieste who brought me there. He said, Lucas, you're like really like uh, the tough guy because at the moment I seen all the things, I, I, I want to bring you back because I didn't want to live there because it was, it, it was crazy. Yeah, mm-hmm. like it, it's crazy. Really? Wow. Um, anyway, but good things that uh, he, he left me there. Mm-hmm. And uh, anyway, uh, I got my first uh, pro contract, uh, three years deal. And um, in Rio, uh, I think uh, things worked really well for me. Uh, also, we've been uh, uh, champions in, in, in Rio, like mm-hmm. uh, uh, with the team. Uh, we have uh, a big star uh, that was uh, Coutinho in the team. Yeah. Crazy. Yeah. Uh, Heard of him. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that, that's not big bull knowledge. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, he's one year younger than me. Uh, so he was uh, 16, turning 17, and uh, I was 17, turning 18. And this guy was just like... I was going to say, could you tell from, from then that he was going to go on to... Really? Well, he, he was a wonder kid. He was at yeah. Inter at like yes. 18. Yeah. yeah. So he so must have been good. He for went yeah. from that team, Lucas, to Inter, was it? Yeah, because when wow. he was 16 to 17, he, he got sold uh, to Inter. But yeah. uh, there's a law. Because you can only, only turn 18 that you can come to, right. yeah. to Europe. Uh, yeah, it's like what Endrick has right yeah. now with yeah. Real Madrid. And yeah. like Vinicius and... Have yeah, that, mm-hmm. yeah. So he was already training with the uh, the first team in, in in Vasco da Gama, and obviously he, he was not playing like every week. So he, they needed him to to get minutes. Yeah. So obviously he was going uh, and and play the games with us, and <laughs> that was just like uh, unbelievable. It was just shocking. He was just like saying like, "Look, I just give the ball to me." So we're just going box to box, and then really? just like it's. Co- it's, it's things like you just yeah. it, it, imaginable. It's just like serious. FIFA. Yeah, it, yeah. You just like dribble everyone. It's just like serious. But you know what? Like in that team, we had such good players as well mm-hmm. that I said to myself, "Oh my days, this is the new big star of Brazil." Mm-hmm. You know, mm-hmm. and as I said, like sometimes you need to be lucky as well. You know, mm-hmm. you cannot have all the talent in the world, mm-hmm. and then like you need to be lucky because mm-hmm. it, it doesn't happen to to become a footballer you know mm-hmm. so is the right time is the right place is the right person like watching you as well mm-hmm. you, of you course. know yeah, yeah definitely so is that pff, lucky click uh, mm-hmm. you, you know but you know like he would at, 
everyone knew that it would be like uh, amazing, a big star. Mm-hmm. But you even uh, you even shared your graduation little party. Yes, yes, which yeah. is crazy. <laughs> I, <laughs> grad- <laughs> I graduate with Felipe Coutinho. They, yeah, they graduated together. Just yeah. Someone yeah. clip clip this, please. <laughs> <laughs> clip this. We're gonna go. Crazy. We're gonna go viral in Brazil, uh, Brazil for this. Have video. you got a picture from it still? I do. I do. Oh, we have to uh, I just so don't cool. like my hair in there. So <laughs> <laughs> you had the long hair as well. Did you have the long hair at that point? Yeah. Were you were you cutting your own hair? No. So it started in Rio because. Uh, well, we started with my my mom because uh, she always liked to to trim my hair, and then I was in Rio, and then my hair was just getting like, really long, really long, and I I couldn't do it myself, and uh, I never liked to go in barbers because they always like uh, um, I was gonna say <laughs> the bad word, <laughs> yeah, <we can. laughs> mess up, <laughs> mess up with my hair, yes, and uh, a guy in, in in the team, uh, his name is Ebert, uh, he's been all around as well, playing in Poland and everything. He said, Lucas, I can I can do you a new trim. And uh, he was the first guy who actually like I let like touch like uh, my, my hair and then just like do like a proper like haircut. And I, I it was shocking because I had like a quite like a long hair and then he just like fading the size and everything. It was just like, yeah, it, it looked really good. It looked really good. And uh, now you now you cut your own hair. Yeah, I, I think I have a picture on that one as well. Really? I can, yeah, uh, that was the first haircut. Uh, I can I can then <laughs> send over to you guys <laughs> as well. And uh, yeah, nowadays uh, I do my own trims. Hopefully it's good. Sometimes you're just coming from training on a Friday. And he's like, do you want me to do yours? <laughs> nah, I'm all right, thanks. <laughs> <laughs> he gets some stick for it. He gets some stick. He does. I mean, but but, uh, it, it, if it looks bad, it's just like I blame myself and I didn't pay for it. You know, yeah, like, no. some <laughs> of you fair. guys, you go to the barbers <laughs> yeah. and then you blame the barbers and you still have to pay Connor's for it. Connor's a prime example of that. <laughs> now, nah, listen, example. I found my boy. I found my boy, man. He, left, he left my barber that I took him to. <laughs> his, name, his, ma- his name is Boss Man. <laughs> yeah, I, was gonna say, I don't know their names. It's actually, who did, we said it's a Nacho. We said if you don't know them, they're boss man. They're they've had the, view, the viewers will know that. It's always boss and man it's when you go into the shop. The, it's, it's just respect. The thing is, it. I could tell you everything about boss man's life. How many kids he has, yes. how many brothers, where he's his from. Name. No. His name, on the other hand, I do not know. No, but I can't tell you anything. My boss man doesn't speak any English. <laughs> <laughs> no, my boss man is good. My boss man is good. English, bless him. Oh, this is good one. This is, this is, this is good one. Go, okay, no, this is brutal. Going back to it, Lucas, uh, you also faced a free kick wizard when you're at Vasco da Gama, right? Yes. Tell us a bit about that. Oh, Juninho. Uh, Juninho Pernambucano. Uh, yeah. Pro? <laughs> I thought that's a name, but <laughs> that is probably the best free kick taker uh, of all time. That would be kind of my CV. I might put one of the Leon ones if we can find oh one. Oh my God. Paid. Oh my goodness. If you haven't seen them, I uh, seen him take a YouTube free kick before, please. Please, after, this, after you watch this. Uh, <laughs> yeah. That was a nightmare. Uh, I mean, it was, it was very good to be there training with them, but I mean, it was a nightmare for the goalkeepers, you know. Uh, I mean, you had, like, the first choice keeper, the second choice keeper. So uh, I was, like, the third choice, fourth choice, like, in, in the first team. And obviously the, f- the first choice and the second choice, they don't stay to do, like, the set pieces, you know, yeah. like uh, free kicks, penalties and everything. And that's why you don't anymore. <laughs> <laughs> that's why it was... Philip, <laughs> straight inside, huh? You get it, you know? Lucas, uh, can you be in goal for penalties? No, I'm all right, mate. I've heard my key, uh, <laughs> He needs to train more than me, you know? No, no. So, anyway, uh, uh, it's like, uh, he was like, uh, Lucas, can you go and go? It's like... Obviously, like, yeah, you're not going to say no for, like, a, a big character, like, a Jimmy, yeah. you know. And then we have, like, the minor kings that we set, like, as a wall, you know. And uh, we goalkeepers, we always, like, have to see, like, uh, or half of the ball or, or the ball. And then, like, Lucas, can you see the ball? It's like, yeah, yeah. I don't know if it's going to make any difference, like, at that <laughs> point. But, but, yeah, yeah, I can see it, I can see it. And then he's like, okay. And then, like, there is, like, uh, the assistant coach, like, blowing the whistle. Boop. Go. Yeah, you can see in the top <laughs> corner after that. Yeah. <laughs> there it is. <laughs> Go. <laughs> like, he doesn't miss it. And it's like, it's incredible. And then, you know, I'm going to try to be clever in the next one, you know. So, <laughs> two steps and then like, big save, big save. Two steps. <laughs> other side. On the other side. <laughs> the other side. But if, coming, if, he, he was, if he was 30 yards out on you in free kicks uh, in training, yeah. how many out of 10 is he scoring on you? Like, actually, just to give context. Uh, that, he'll hit a target on the 10. 
Yeah, Jeez, yeah, me wow. med medley. And he was one of the first people to properly yeah. perfect the knuckleball. Yes. Yeah, where he incredible. Because I incredible. I think in a match, a good free kick taker is like six to twelve percent conversion mm -hmm. rates from like inside thirty yards, mm -hmm. right? Because think of it, if you take, you know, ten free kicks and you score one, that's pretty good. Yeah, yeah. shooting. Yeah. yeah, if he can put it on target every time. Every time. That's unbelievable. Yeah. But, it, it but is Lucas, crazy. did he did he practice that or was that just genuine like? It was just genuine No, he talent. practiced. He yeah, practiced. see, I'm glad that you said that every, for every the viewers. And the, you know, it's really crazy, yeah. The, the every technique. Day. But the technique that he has, it was just like his. Mm -hmm. He's like, I don't, I don't know. Just so developed it yeah. and then just kept working on it. Yes, yeah. it's incredible. Wow. Like the ball, even like when the ball was coming at you, it was just like, do you know what? Those mm -hmm. animes, the football animes, <laughs> yeah. the ball is coming at you and then it just poop. <laughs> they yeah. just go and go, just like exactly like wow. that. You know, what like, an experience! <laughs> what an experience! <laughs> Did you go on then to make first team appearances, Lucas? Or? No. Uh, okay. So we had in Simon a goalkeeper, Fernando Pras. Mm -hmm. uh, that after like uh, other years, uh, they've been in the national team as well. Mm -hmm. He's been in the national team, and uh, I, it's it's very difficult for a, a Premier League club, let's say, to mm -hmm. to put like young keeper. Of uh, course, you know, yeah, just of course. like. And as as a big name as Vasco da Gama, there, like you know, like it's, it's, it's very difficult for you to to break through it, like mm -hmm. in the in the and the twenties and the twenty threes mm -hmm. to to the professional uh, team, yeah, like yeah. men's football. Mm -hmm. You know, it's a big difference, uh, mm -hmm. as as we know. Um, so I I couldn't break through it, uh, Vasco da Gama. Uh, but before we moved to Vasco, I had another one that uh, I been selected to be in the national team under twenties when I was in Vasco. Ooh. Wow. Yeah. Uh, yeah. so that's that's a, a, every that's kid's you. dream, isn't it? it? it is. Yeah, they, like that's just incredible. Yeah, to uh, represent your nation. I know. I have a good story because uh, uh, I had a few weeks off because they gave to me like uh, a period of, of uh, vacation or something like this. And uh, I remember I landed at my city. Uh, my parents they came pick me up from the airport, and on on the way home uh, I received a call from my goalie coach and. Uh, I'm like that's that's weird because I just landed, you know. Like you just gave me like two weeks off. Mm -hmm. Like I'm gonna stay with my my, my family right yeah, now. You know? said Lucas, where are you? <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> and then he's like, he actually said like, Lucas, where are you? He's like, oh, I just landed. Like uh, I'm I'm on my way like home right now. And then he's like, Lucas, you, you need to come back. And I was like, why? Like I did something wrong. Like uh, uh, should I not have the two weeks off as as everyone had? Mm -hmm. And it's like, uh, no, uh, you need to come back because you've been selected to be in the national team in the 20s. And wow. then I'm like, I couldn't believe it. It's like, you serious? And I was like, yeah, yeah, you need to come back wow. like in two days' time or something like this. Wow, that is amazing. So I start crying and then my mom and dad just like start panicking a little bit. Like, what really? happened? Who's calling you? Who's calling you? Yeah. You know? And then my dad just pulled over and just like I, I told him like, oh, I just been selected to be like in the, in the wow. national team. And under twenties, and uh, everyone just like start crying in the car. Oh, you know, such you know? a lovely it memory, was, man! It was wow. so good because uh, I remember my, my parents just like crying, and mm -hmm. it was like you, you know, like when you see your parents, like, oh, you, I'm proud of you. you yeah, know? Yes. Like, yes. Like, yeah, yeah, that is different. Yeah, so, yeah. And when I was in Rio, it was the first time which I got like a, a proper salary because it was mm -hmm. the, my first um, uh, pro contract, mm -hmm. and it was the first time that I paid a meal for my parents. Oh, like, lovely, you know, yeah. 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 So really I, nice. I do remember now just saying it, and, and that was just like so good, you know, awesome. like having like pay like because they obviously paid everything for me, mm -hmm. like they were like mm -hmm. seventeen, but. Okay, now he's on me. He's my on turn. me. Yeah, you yeah. know, my I, turn. I got that. Wait, I got it. Wait. What did you say, McDonald's? <laughs> <laughs> what was the cheapest meal? That we yeah. Yeah. Just grab starters. Don't grab starters. <laughs> hey, with the way this guy can make money stretch, I bet he's still living off that wage for 19. <laughs> I've right. never seen someone able to make a money stretch so far. See, it's we, incredible. We've seen the Christmas do, no? Yeah, 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 we stretched yeah, yeah. so much. That, yeah, that, yeah. Was, that, true, that, that was good. That was good. Um, yeah. Within this under twenty team, were there any big names that have? Oh yes, uh, there was big Oscar. Yeah. Oscar. Oscar. Wow. Oscar. Hey, wearing the Chelsea shirt today. Oh yes. Yeah, you see, Oscar is a, a weird one because I, I really fell in love with the way he played. He's so good and. It's, it's kind of strange. He just left Europe at 25. Is that, where is that brother now? He's still in China. China. So still in China. He, I think he's about 32 now, and he's been there for the last seven years, and his contract is finishing up, and he's looking to come back to Europe, but it's weird because you know he spent actually the majority of his career in China. Yeah, yeah I know. And he went so young. It's a, it's a weird one because it's like you're living everyone's dream of playing in the Prem for a top club, but he's creating generational wealth mm -hmm. by being in China. Yeah. And 
He won everything bar a Champions League with Chelsea, so mm. it's hard to knock it, but... I know. Yeah, well, it's it's a bit unfortunate as I well. What but was that when like? you have when you have, when you have like the big zeros at the end, yeah, oh, yeah, when you come that offer, yeah, you're just like you know. made stone big zeros next day. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Fact, I just agreed with you there, but actually, no, I don't know what that feels like. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah so I know when I was that one. I know when I was negotiating. Yeah, that <laughs> happened yeah, it's in well. my head somewhere. <laughs> that sort of money, but, um, again, what was what was uh, Oscar like? Was he oh, another player that you you were yeah. saying to yourself this this? But he's going to go on to do You know, like, things. we were 20 at the time. Mm -hmm. And uh, he was already, like, uh, training and and, playing and doing, like, some mm -hmm. of the games with the first team. Uh, he had a few problems with uh, Sao Paulo mm -hmm. and uh, Inter. Mm -hmm. So I think they were, like, uh, in in court just to see, like... Mm -hmm. uh, it was, like, a bit of a problem, like, that he had it. So everyone was traveling to Uruguay. That was the competition in Uruguay, yeah. So everyone was there. And we were at the camp, like training and everything. Like in the in the next day, uh, obviously we we arrived, and the first day we were just like resting and everything. Uh, so we train the next day, and uh, a helicopter just like start landing like uh, nearby, and then we we're like, what's what's going on there? Is a helicopter? And then some of the lads like, oh, Oscar has arrived. Wow! <laughs> no way! That is my yeah. So. He was Literally. already like a, a big, big player yeah, at the I time, was say. you know. And uh, uh, up, up, on training, the guy was just like crazy. Got to turn up in a he, helicopter. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, you know, uh, it was such a big name uh, at the time uh, already. Uh, we had like a Lampa trick uh, as well. Uh, he was playing a Shakhtar a little bit. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Brazilians yeah. love that club. Yeah. 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 They love it. So talk us through this, the, the time in Uruguay, because I'm intrigued. Yeah, so I remember a lot the time of uh, the size of the McDonald's. Oh, <laughs> we'll talk after this. Perhaps I go to your city. Get that Spanish chop on. Yes, yeah. Absolutely. We'll talk after. Come on, come on. <laughs> no. So, I mean, like, it was the first time being like around, I mean, uh, the best of the best at the time, yeah. like in the twenties of Brazil, were just being selected to be there in that competition. You know, what competition actually was it? It was like a South America, okay. which is like just a wow. South America like a competition. America, yeah. yeah. Uh, so the quality, it was just like incredible. You know, right. the quality of it. And then it just like uh, the first training, which is like we didn't have Oscar, but then the second day we had Oscar, and then like mm. pff, man, was just like was unbelievable. Obviously, yeah. you played with Coutinho when he was younger. Yeah. In comparison to Oscar, was was Coutinho clear, or was it just because in different situations? It was like, different situations because yeah. uh, you know you're playing against the best of the best as well. Yeah, uh, you know you're playing against a Uruguay, Argentina, like uh, Chile, all the all the big guys at the time. Uh, and were there big names in there? In their I, don't remember. Remember? Oh, I don't remember. I don't remember. We have to do some research. Yeah, yeah. Mm. yeah. This guy's gonna find out you played against Luis Suarez. Didn't <laughs> <you know? laughs> Oh, I wonder who that's number playing ten years up. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it could be. You know, yeah. never know. How old do you think Lucas is, by the way? No, Messi's yeah, yeah, yeah. a few years I'm old. Like, no, <laughs> Lucas, we always make fun of you for being old, but you're not that old. Yeah. I'm 24, mate. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so no, some of the plays that uh, Oscar produced, like on the tournament, were just like great. Serious. It's just like a, a serious, serious thing. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, it, that was. Uh, a few years ago, uh, with the one account now. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and come here. What about yourself? Did you manage to get minutes playing? Yeah, uh, I got uh, I got some minutes in that competition. Uh, unfortunately, we we lost uh, in the final against uh, Uruguay. Wow. Uh, yeah, the the main guys uh, at the time. Mm -hmm. uh, maybe Suarez was there, and then yeah. he scored. You know. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, uh, I remember just everyone was just like fuming, just getting the medal because you know. Brazil used to win, win everything, yeah. you know, and then we, we used to, to mm -hmm. win, uh, mm -hmm. you know, and when we get like into these uh, competitions, it's just like we, we want to win mm -hmm. everything. And then obviously uh, that was my only time going to the national team. And uh, I don't know, imagine if you won that tournament, a few things could be of different. Course, yeah. Much, you yeah. Know? Um, so, yeah, uh, we would never know what happened. <laughs> mm -hmm. And then you go back to your parent club. Talk us then through the. Well, I'm just trying to think. How does it? How how did it work out then when you go back to your? Club? <clears throat> yeah. So uh, after when I when I came back from uh, from the national team, uh, um, they treat me differently. You know, 
and uh, I was oh, the red carpet. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. The helicopter. So, <laughs> <Oscar's> helicopter <laughs> helicopter. <Yeah. laughs> so I was more involved with the first team at the time and training with them like uh, more uh, frequent. And uh, we had a uh, big name as well, uh, Carlos Alberto. In, yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah, in the change room. Wow. And uh, cool. that this guy was just like a crazy guy to be around. Yeah, uh, yeah. we cannot talk uh, things that he was doing like here in the pod. But, uh, <laughs> we can talk after. I know his Brazilian brothers are crazy. I they, they are crazy. crazy, yeah. crazy. Uh, I think he was the youngest player to win the Champions League or something like this. No, with, really, with Porto. Yeah, really. Yeah, I like how you ask Connor by the way. Yeah, Connor, Connor doesn't yeah. know. Yeah. Connor, you don't yeah. know. Connor's got a fake oh. ball on it. She just <laughs> wow. researches everything. Sorry, before. the internet connection's a bit slow. <laughs> <laughs> Can you give me a second. Yeah. <laughs> so, oh no, my phone's recording. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so yeah, after so again uh, breaking through like into the the first team was just like so difficult. So I said uh, so it was that time when my three year contract was ending, and they decided to not extend. And that was when I got the opportunity to go back to my city and play for Atlético Paranaense again. And uh, that was that was a dream. Uh, you know, I signed three years again with them. And it's probably got financial security yeah. with these three year contracts. Where are these three year deals in England? <laughs> the man? one thing I've learned about him, he's a businessman. He's a businessman. <laughs> and uh, again, uh, that was the team that I supported since I was young as well, uh, Atlético Paranaense. So uh, everyone in the family was just like buzzing for me to sign it. And uh, uh, a big name on Atlético Paranaense was uh, Neto, which is uh, nowadays at uh, Bournemouth. Yeah, <laughs> and, and you're still quite, Barca. yeah, paper Barca. <laughs> you're still quite close to them as well. Yeah, yeah. I mean, we've been uh, together in the youth uh, youth team. Uh, he was two years older than me, but obviously, uh, uh, um, when I was uh, going at Atletico, and he was already like a big name over there, you know, and. Uh, um, we did this uh, same development, like so. We have a, a big group chat, uh, and uh, we have all the all the keepers like playing for for really? Atlético Paranaense, and then we have the group chat still, and then we just uh, that's class. Keep it You'll have to contact. put the link in from this video into the group <laughs> chat. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Could show the Bournemouth yeah, players. Yeah, get Neto. Forward it's a Messi hey, actually. Let, let Alex Scott know. Let Alex Scott know. Don't, don't care about Messi and Barcelona yeah, boys. Well, Alex Scott. <laughs> yeah. You got Alex Scott on the pod. <laughs> ah, it's good. You've so one of your good friends has played with the greatest. Well, that's unbelievable. What oh, a career right. he's had. What was it? Valencia, Barca. <laughs> wow. And is he captain? I think he's captain now at Bournemouth, isn't yeah, he? Yeah, yeah. 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 Unbelievable. How, this keeper. How many years older is he than you? Like uh, two, two years. Two. Yeah. yeah. Two years older. Wow. Yeah. I'm still waiting for the complimentary uh, Bournemouth tickets. Yeah, <laughs> We're going to have to get down. Hey, it's so hard to get Bournemouth tickets, though, because the stadium's so, tiny, so yeah. small. Mm -hmm. It's only, what, 12,000 people? It's, it's crazy. It's mental. It's a bit wow. bigger than the Gallagher. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> only just. Yeah. I'm just thinking, is Matt to think you can actually send that to Messi? Yeah. Oh, yeah, on, Messi. Just Messi. Come on, come on, <laughs> Messi won't understand the thing, but I'm wearing a space. He's just there with his Yerba Mate, just drinking, thinking, what are these boys doing? It's it's he might know Nacho Gonzalez. But, He's drinking. Yeah, yeah. possibly. He's yeah. Yeah. Nacho. Yeah. Hey, we'll have to, uh, on the New Jersey trip, we'll book to Miami as well. Go <laughs> yeah. see all the boys. Ooh, yes. Yeah. yeah. So it sounds like you've had such, I mean, it doesn't, you have had such an unbelievable believable career in brazil how was it to make the decision to leave like your home country yeah i mean I, i've been in very good clubs yeah but it was just not the breaking through into men's football that was the hardest part you know mm -hmm. uh we we had everton at the time when i moved to atletico paranaense we had everton that was like uh the, in the national team as well yeah so we're like uh, when are we got a chance? Like when I'm gonna be a little bit lucky, you know? Mm -hmm. uh, I got few loans. Uh, it didn't work out. Uh, you know, I started picking up like few injuries, and uh, that was no good. And um, then when I decided to move to smaller teams to see if I could get a chance, and I my first professional game was in Acre which you can ping that in the map is so far away. It's so far away from everything. And it's a different Brazil, okay? It's, it, it, it's crazy. For me to say it, it's, it's a different Brazil, okay? Yeah. It's, it's basically very close to the Amazon forest. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. And yeah, yeah it's, it's, it's basically just like Indians over there, you know? Really? It, it's crazy, yeah. Uh, so that was my first professional uh, game that I, I played in, in Acre, and uh, we just like uh, on the on the regional uh, uh, um, competition, which was the Acreano, yeah, the name of it. 
and uh, we managed to win uh, that one. Uh, but I put in my head after that that I didn't want to go into more like uh, small teams uh, in Brazil because once that the calendar is not the whole year, uh, they only play uh, three, four months uh, from the whole year. And uh, second of all, like that, they normally don't pay you. So uh, <laughs> it's not ideal. <laughs> yeah, it's, not, it's far from ideal. Oh, that's not ideal. That's not ideal. <laughs> Uh, that is not ideal, especially no. for you, bud, as well. I know. Wow, that Vasco uh, money was still stretching. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he was, he was uh, finding a way, don't you worry. <laughs> uh, yeah, so, you know, you, you need to go to court and everything. So it's just like a long process, you know. Mm -hmm. So uh, lots of footballers in Brazil, they just do the same. And mm -hmm. uh, it's not ideal. <laughs> <As you said. laughs> it's not ideal. <laughs> so then I put in my head, like, I don't want to do this anymore, you know. So... I was the point of like, or I give up and then just do something else, or I just try my luck in Europe. And mm -hmm. if it doesn't work in Europe, I always go back home and then I just try something else, you mm -hmm. know. Um, skateboarding, by the way. Skateboarding. <laughs> <laughs> skateboarding is massive because Tony Hawk, Hawk, the, yeah. the X Games and stuff. Yeah. There's so many Brazilians. So many Brazilians. So I remember yeah. going into Camden Market with you. And you went into this skateboard shot, and I thought, you yes. should know. I thought, it's not serious. <laughs> and I was outside with Rene. So I look at everything. And I was saying to Rene, I was like, this brother's been in this shot for about 10 minutes. What is he doing? <laughs> Freezing <laughs> cold, by the way. That is so good. Oh, that actually came out. I, was, yeah, I saw a couple of nice Did ones. You know, it's like, oh, the bars, oh, the wheels, like, it, it, no. something that <laughs> I don't understand. What, yeah, I don't know. know. That's an interesting <laughs> I, don't know. Like, what, um, I actually used to like skateboarding a little bit growing up, but I was never good at it. What is like, is it, you're a street skateboarder? Yeah, skateboarder. street skateboarder. Yeah, street, yeah street. like grinding, yeah, yeah. like yeah. doing all the tricks. Yeah, that's what, what was it? The Ollie. The that's Ollie. what I used to. Yeah, but that's the, Ollie. the Ollie is just a. <laughs> do you never play skateboard? No, what's the one where you like flip it? A pop shove it. Yeah. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. No, I used, yeah. to, I, I used to love skate free. I used to, I used to play with the, the little skateboard thing. <laughs> you remember that? Uh, you used to like roll them with your fingers and you'd like, do tech that. Deck. A tech deck is cool. Yeah. Tech deck, yeah. yeah, yeah you used yeah, to yeah. get the ramps trust and all. Trust me, trust me. I used to love that. Really? <laughs> so <laughs> when you went, the did you just go straight to Spain or did you try any other countries in Europe? No, uh, straight to Spain. Uh, so my agent at the time uh, knew a guy in, in here, in, in Spain. And... Uh, the, the club was supposed to go that uh, we sport in the Gijon. Uh, a big club. Yeah, yeah. yeah. huge club. Yeah. Uh, I think at the time they were like in the second division mm -hmm. and it was me and a striker. Mm -hmm. So we said, uh, yeah, let's try this opportunity. But it was like as a trial. Okay. Yeah. And we got to Madrid uh, to go to, to the sport in the Gijon. And my agent is calling the guy saying like, oh, where are you guys? Like we just arrived. And then he said, no, the, the deal is off. Like the managing team has changed and we're not going to need any more like the keeper or the striker. And I'm like, oh my days. Wow. So you've traveled to all the way to Spain for yeah. to say that to you? When you yeah. And then we're like, okay, what are we going to do? We're just like going to come back or we're going to try a few things in here. Yeah. So we've been trialing in uh, third division teams in, mm -hmm. in, in Madrid, mm -hmm. uh, but that was around uh, August mm -hmm. uh, already. Mm -hmm. And uh, I, I mean, uh, every team had like a goalkeeper, you know, mm -hmm. and uh, nice. you know how it worked with the strikers. They always want one more striker yeah. if you're good. Of course. Yeah. You know? yeah. But They always make room for you. They always make room. But every team, they have free two goalkeepers already. So nah, we don't need a goalkeeper, but we need a striker. We can see the striker at least, you know? So that was my, that was me for like almost like two months. We need a striker, but we don't need the goalkeeper. Did you think about changing positions at any point? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you know, maybe, you know. Yeah, you're like, genuine genuine you were question. cursing Carlinho. <laughs> <laughs> no, damn it. <laughs> genuine question. What, what level do you reckon you could have got to if you stayed as an outfielder? Do you reckon you could have come professional outfield? Um... I don't know. What do you think would have held you back if you weren't to become a professional outfield? Um, because like we see, I when, think when the ball comes back to you and stuff, your your yeah. control is better than some of the outfield. Yeah, players. and the Hauser yeah. is top top yeah. tier, yeah. and your technique is so good. Like, yeah, um, I don't know. Uh, that's a good question, actually. <laughs> yeah, I'd, I'd like to know, but we cannot go back in time. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah that's right. that is true. Uh, that is true. I, I mean, uh, with. Uh, the amount of people in Brazil that I seen it with quality, I don't think I would make it. Really? Yeah. 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 Like really. the amount of people I seen with quality, quality. Yeah. That nowadays they don't play at all football. Really? It's crazy. So I must yeah. say the thing that I've noticed, especially 
you've played at such a high level, which we'll get onto in a bit, but your knowledge for the game mm. and the understanding is unbelievable. Like we'll come off the pitch, we've won a game and you'll be so frustrated and you're, yeah. you're um, what's, the, what's the word I'm looking for? Just stand standards, standards, yeah. standards, yeah. 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 your perfectionism. Yeah. And you're, yeah, you're a perfectionist. Like that is something that is, is so admirable mm -hmm. yeah. and it shows that your knowledge for the game is, is so good. But yeah, after we lose, we, or not sorry, even sorry. after we lose, after we win, but we've played bad, it's almost worse than if we've lost. Yeah. 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 And yeah, 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 we get in sometimes <laughs> and he's like, get the Hoover out now. <laughs> <laughs> okay. And okay. He, gets, he gets his little maid outfit on. <laughs> I said, okay, Lucas. <laughs> no, what a teammate. A leader, a proper leader. But yeah. take us, um, I'm intrigued now, take us back to your time in Spain then. Obviously, yeah, they're looking so for... We stayed, strikers. I think, almost two months in Madrid. Mm -hmm. And they said, like, we want to stay with the striker. But then mm -hmm. at the time, the striker wants to stay, like, with me. And then I, I told him, like, we didn't come here to be together, you know? Like, yeah. you do your own thing, and then yeah. I do my own thing. Mm -hmm. But he said, like, no, no, no. Like, for the first months, I would, like, just be, like, the same team as you, at least. Of course, you know? yeah. Comfort then, And I wouldn't do that for him, you know? Like, oh, really? <laughs> It's hard, man. He's hard. Yeah, I was going to say, wow. <laughs> <laughs> Bro. Uh, then, um, at the end, uh, we couldn't find any team in Madrid. So we said, like, we have uh, another possibility to go to Mallorca and mm -hmm. then go there in a third division. And again, we got to Mallorca. We need a striker. We don't need a goalkeeper. But then I, I asked the, the manager at the time and said, like, uh, can I just train with you guys? Because otherwise I'm just going to stay here uh, just doing nothing. You know, yeah. can Party. I just train? Yeah. <laughs> Party in my York. Yeah. Magaluf. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, but then, uh, I mean, I was training and then the manager at the time, he's like, OK, he's much better than the goalkeepers that I have here. So I don't know what I'm going to do because I have three goalkeepers signed already. Mm -hmm. Like two were like a proper like men's and then one was just like coming from the academy anyway. Um, and then it's like, Lucas, I want you to give opportunity, but I can't break the contract right now. It's just like it's two games in, it's three yeah. games in. Like I need to pay so much money just to break the contract. Yeah. You know? So it happened that one keeper got injured. And then it was like kind of like a serious thing. And then I said, okay, maybe just make me a second now. So he's like, okay, but I can't pay you much. It's like, okay, no worries. Like I'll, I'll play you now. Use like, it as just, an opportunity. I just needed to restart my career. <laughs> like, in Europe. like no one knew me. Like, yeah. you know, I just had it on my CV. Like I passed from these teams, the interview, yeah, yeah. like a national team and everything. Mm -hmm. But people generally didn't know like mm -hmm. who Lucas Kovalan was, you know? Mm -hmm. And... The keeper started doing like uh, bad games because I think uh, he he felt like I was coming. The pressure, you know, yeah. the pressure, really, like I'm training. You're breathing down his yeah. neck. Yeah, you know, if you do a mistake, like yeah. I'm here, I'm you know. Here. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, then that's what happened. Uh, so the gaffer gave him the opportunity, and the other keeper was just like fuming. He decided to leave the team, mm -hmm. so he just left <laughs> like so easy for me. Really? And, Did yeah. you get more money? Uh, so yeah, did I get my money? Yeah, that and contract then, extension, baby. Didn't even have to ask that question. <laughs> yeah. I could have told you. <laughs> you got that contract extension. But uh, then I finished that season uh, with uh, Atletico Rafael. And uh, I mean, it was difficult for me as well because I always chose English uh, than uh, Spanish in school. Mm -hmm. So I had no clue like to speak Spanish. I mean, we, I speak Portuguese, but it's so different. Mm -hmm. It is so different. Like they speak so quick, you know, we speak Spanish. Mm -hmm. So they speak so quick and I didn't understand a word. What are they saying? That was just really? crazy. Yes. So culture wise was just like very good for me. Just like to start adapting to the European, like what we from South, I'm from South of, South of Brazil and it's um, kind of like a European, like cities and everything is just like, but come to Europe and then like a new culture, like new language, of you course. know. Mm -hmm. uh, but then it was just like an easy off to, to come to England. Mm -hmm. uh, so mm -hmm. that, that was that was very good. And where was where did you start out in England then? <clears throat> how did you how did it come about you coming to England? Yeah, uh, so I finished my second year in Spain and uh, I was not quite happy how mm -hmm. things were working over there. Mm -hmm. Then I decided to take another leap of faith. And it was crazy because I, I went back to Brazil and wasn't certain if, that I was going to come back to Spain. 
And I received a phone call from a teammate, like an ex-teammate uh, from Atlético Paranaense. And then he was like, uh, Lucas, um, some money the keeper to go to England. Would you like wow. to go? And then I was like, uh, yeah, but how come this is just happening? He's like, yeah, they asked me to come, but I'm under contract. And I just put your name there because mm -hmm. I know you have like a citizenship. I know like you have Italian passport, yeah. so you can go to England like easily. And I'm like... Yeah, sign me up. Let's oh, go. Brilliant. You know? oh. and, and what club is that, sorry? Uh, Whitehawk. Whitehawk. Yeah. And nice. which at the time they were Conference South. Conference South, yes. Yeah. I remember Conference you South. telling me there was quite a lot of, was it Brazilians or Spanish people yes. at the time? So the manager was Argentin <clears throat> Argentinian. Right, okay. And then he knew this guy that was uh, in Spain. Mm -hmm. So he heard about me a little bit. Mm -hmm. And then he said uh, to this teammate of mine, okay, so do you have someone else? And then he told my name, and then the guy said, "Oh, this name rings a bell." Wow! And then you, were doing, you must have been doing one in Spain. Yeah, so. yeah, yeah, yeah. And then I'm like, um, "Give me this contract, okay? Mm -hmm. I'm going, I'm going to England." Mm -hmm. So they sent over the contract. I signed it. Uh, they even didn't see me. Just like they saw me, like just like on videos and everything yeah. that I had it. And at the time, this uh, Argentina manager tried to bring uh, ten Brazilians into the south uh, the, the, south. the conference south yeah so white hot uh, white hot club de football <laughs> <laughs> yeah. that is crazy that, that was like that and then what happened was here's so much more physical I, you, you you come from from america coming for playing from college it's so crazy you, you notice like the the difference of but i can imagine it's even worse for brazil because in the u.s at least it's quite like physically based yeah or, like it's you know, it's very quick mm. in Brazil. Like, oh my God, the ball is on the floor the whole game. Yeah. Like that's, that is probably when you think technique, you think Brazilian. Yeah. If someone does a good skill. It's mm. like, oh, are they Brazilian? Yeah. Is White Hawks pitch, is, is it even good? Well, up the hill? Yeah, it's the a hill, hill no? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. What, so, what league are they now, sorry? I think they're step three. Yeah, step three. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. So he brought 10 Brazilians to play the, the cover in South. Yeah. Wow. So in his mind was like, if we Brazilians, we're good on the football. So we know we're going to pop at everyone and then we're just going to win the league. Uh, yeah, that didn't happen because, uh, <laughs> you know, uh, the referees, they were not allowed, you know, like Brazilians, yeah. like cheap freaky, yeah, like yeah, yeah. dive, mm -hmm. you know, the divers. I'd love it out there. Yeah, you I'd know love the divers. It out there. Yeah, yeah. 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 I'm so Brazilian. This guy heart. here knows to dive. Yeah. <laughs> Neymar's my favorite player of all time, that's why. <laughs> Put a clip of him diving up. <laughs> yeah. Put a clip. <laughs> I'll expose myself. <laughs> <laughs> and uh you know uh the months that's passing is just like i think two three months into the competition and then we're just like not picking up points oh brazilians in the winter as well <laughs> yeah good oh, luck no playing a break water, no winter break good yeah. luck playing on those waterlogged pitches in february Jeez. yeah see so we started getting to winter time and uh i mean uh i was the one like speaking a little bit english with the other lads in the change room otherwise we're just like there's a Portuguese like uh, speakers just like in the change room. It was like crazy. That's yeah, crazy. That is, yeah, must be, yeah, so must what, be mental for the English players. What was yeah. your English like, Lucas? Was it as good as it is now? No, no, no. no. Yeah, <laughs> but like he was saying that he studied in. I don't know. I learned a different language from the comfort of my own home. Yeah, that's it, about hang that. on. Yeah, but, but you was, go live in Spain for how many years? Lived in England now. Eight years now. Eight yeah. years. But you, you, first year you go to Spain compared to eight years later. Well, that's gonna... how the Dutch and the Germans do it. They watch TV with the English. Yeah, but if you've lived in the Dutch, actually, yeah, I actually yeah, I get what you're saying. You're yeah, talking yeah. to someone who can speak two languages, by the way. Okay. <laughs> you're not <laughs> your love, brother. Oh, you are so... <laughs> <laughs> you always say that. <laughs> so, so He's game. No, no game. girlfriend. You're just such, no a, you're just such a weird He's guy. No so I'm not going to ask. But sorry, before... Before you was rudely interrupted, he found that he should have been interrupted. The other. He's, he's waffling on now. Carry on there, but carry on. Yeah, uh, so basically, how was your English when you first got so, to Whitehawk? Uh, do you know the verb to be? Yes. <laughs> so it was kind of like that. <laughs> no, it was a little bit better, but you know, you learn English in this school in Brazil, and then you come over here, and everyone has different accents, and it's just like, Oh my days, what are they talking? It's like, yeah. there's a dialect? Or oh, is just like yeah. a proper English, yeah. you know? Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, it was kind of getting to know more like how people were speaking it. Mm -hmm. You know, they had to speak with us like a little bit like um, opposed, mm -hmm. you know, for us to understand. Uh, but it was a multicultural like a dressing room because mm -hmm. uh, we had uh, the 10 Brazilians, then we had uh, two Spanish people, one Argentinian, 
uh, two French and I think four English people. I think that was it. Really? Yeah, yeah that was that was that was crazy. Um, so, I mean, the chairman was not very happy with how we progress in the league. Yeah. And he said uh, to to Pablo Asensio, the the manager at the time, um, said you have uh, one or two more games. And otherwise, we just need to. You're gonna sack you and gonna bring new players, and um, that what happened. So they sacked all the Brazilians, and I am the only one who stayed there. No way! Yeah, wow. Uh, wow. Yeah. So um, another manager came in, and that guy was a nightmare for me. It was, really? Yeah, he turned um, England like into into hell, like for me. It was it was crazy. It was. Uh, it was a point of like he was shaking everyone's hands in the change room and then he was gonna shake your hand and then he look at you and they just keeps you, you know. He was just like, Don't I'm him, I'm not gonna touch you or whatever, you know. And he was he was weird because he was trying to me to get the release clause signed and he's <laughs> making me train as a left back, as a right back, and uh, not train as a goalkeeper. So you did make it pro as a player in the very <laughs> least. <laughs> in England. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yes. So uh, he was every training session, he was calling me like in the office saying like, Lucas, I can make your life very difficult here. So That's you, crazy. Yeah, so. It's the dark side of professional football. Yeah, what, yeah, you know. What a tough first experience yeah, in English football and then that is. I said like, this cannot, like, that was my first like proper English manager. And I'm like, it cannot be like that. It's gonna be England, you know. Yeah. Otherwise, I'm screwed. screwed. No, I cannot say screwed. Yeah. <laughs> screwed. Yeah. You're, you're in, in trouble. You're in, in big trouble. trouble. Yeah. <laughs> Otherwise, I'm in trouble here. Yeah. And uh, the good thing was that he sent me on loan uh, to Lewis, and what a lovely club. In Canada. Uh, yeah. What a lovely club. Uh, I mean, um, people when I went there, uh, my English was not very good and. They were like very patient with me. Um, the manager at the time, uh, he was uh, picking me up from where, where I was living, which was uh, Brighton, and bring me uh, to training, uh, Luis. And I stayed a month with them. And I remember that uh, they were not in a good run. And I went there for a month, and I think it was uh, five or six games. We won five games and draw one. So Class. it was like an unbelievable run oh. for me as well. And the fans were class over there. Like mm -hmm. it's a big, big family, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, it's a it's a very nice club. And mm -hmm. then I I had a different different uh, perspective of. Yeah, of course, it was good for you to yeah. see that. Yeah, as well. and they, they were a league. Upset. They were a league below White Hawk. They were a league <laughs> below. Okay, yeah. cool. And when I came back to to White Hawk, uh, <laughs> I remember seeing that manager again. And uh, I don't like to mention his name, but mm -hmm. I, I remember his name. <laughs> uh, you can tell us off camera. Uh, yeah. We know to avoid him. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Sure. Does he still manage now? Do you know? Uh, I think he does. Yeah, uh, he knows his address, everything. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 <laughs> uh, and he look at me. He's like, "You're already back. I'm gonna send you like on the line again." You know, he's like, he was just like so rude. He was just like, I, I, I was avoiding him like at, at, at every point. Like if I could see him like walking towards me, like he was just going like in a different direction. You know. Uh, but yeah, um, I think I I gave a an interview to to a Brazilian uh, web page or something like be something like this, and uh, I mentioned that the, the club was not very good to me, and uh, somehow someone find it, and the fans they were like, Lucas, uh, we don't support this, uh, you, you know, this attitude, so we we want him out as well. And I didn't make a big fuss in here in England, but someone find out. And yeah. then I've been, um, the chairman called me and says like, printed like the interview, <laughs> they printed the interview and then they showed me. And then uh, obviously they translated because uh, everything was like in Portuguese and uh, something about it was like a mistranslation that the, the manage management uh, of the club, they knew about it as well, but they didn't do nothing. But that was wrong on there. Like I, I didn't sp spoke. I didn't speak with no one. Like at the time, mm -hmm. so I, I, I just decided just to keep it quiet anyway. Mm -hmm. And I don't know. Suddenly, this guy just 
finds another job and then um, he leaves he leaves Whitehawk and then oh, yeah so he essentially left because of the pressure that the I, fans were putting on him I don't know I don't know what happened <laughs> uh, you know doesn't want to take responsibility yeah, yeah. so yeah. he like a, a week after uh, or two weeks after he just like left right okay. and uh, another manager came in mm -hmm. and um, he brought more players like and that was just like more uh, adapting to the mm -hmm. English football uh, mm -hmm. as well. And uh, I, I managed to finish that season at, at White Hawk. And um, I, I didn't know if I was going to come back mm -hmm. to England at that point. And um, yeah, I, I did. <laughs> you did. And, so and was that for White Hawk? Did you resign then with the new manager? or No, uh, I went to, to Worthing. To uh, yes, uh, I was in Brazil again, and uh, I received a call from Gary Alfick, the manager at the time, mm -hmm. and he said, uh, "Lucas, uh, do you want to come to to Orvin, uh, to, to play for me?" And uh, I didn't have no club at, uh, at, at the time, and I, I thought that was a good opportunity for me as well. Mm -hmm. And then I said, uh, "Yeah, I, I go and play." So we. And what league was that? Sorry. That was one below, so it was like Ish Ishmael Prem. Ishmael yeah. Prem, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. And um, I said, uh, yeah, I, I I go I go to play for you. And uh, again, the the beginning of the season was not very good, and, uh, and uh, he got sacked. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, Hinchwood Hinchwood came, and uh, the manager just left. Just left. Yeah, yeah. He, just left. he was yeah. there for ages. Oh, he's been yeah. there for ages. Yeah. Then, but, yeah. yeah. Because what, what time is this, like 2017, 2018? Yeah, 2017, yeah. 2018, yeah. It's uh, crazy. And uh, I did like the style of play, you know, as a Brazilian, of like, like playing from yeah, the back. Yeah, yeah, you would have been there, like, yeah, they really play with the keeper. Yes. Like that must have been a dream setup for yes, you. Yeah, yeah, so uh, it was perfect. Uh, imagine like uh, from White Hawk to, <laughs> to Warden, that we just going long, 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 long to just play a little bit of football it was just like yeah. a dream for me like a, it's a free g service as well and uh, it was quite good and mm -hmm. uh, I, I really enjoyed it my time over there and uh, again uh, the club for me is a, is a very good club uh, they they embraced me uh, again you know I, I really felt loved uh, at the club with, yeah with they've the actually fans. they've given you good receptions when we've yeah. played them this season <laughs> yeah. like I remember them like applauding you when you run usually the goalkeeper runs over <laughs> to the away fans they're getting all, <laughs> all the names start, uh, yeah exactly <laughs> and yeah they applauded you which was, which was cool I remember that so I'm how still long... waiting I'm still waiting for my statue of worthy <laughs> <laughs> maybe one of base said after this <laughs> yeah I'll tell That's you right. what you're on your way there we go yeah, the Lucas Cobblin stand. Well, yeah, maybe the new stands they're gonna put like that, you know. Uh, it should be. How long did you do at Worthing? So it was two years. Two years. And uh, funny enough, I was uh, playing well, mm -hmm. and uh, it was an FA Cup game. Mm -hmm. uh, I broke my arm into someone's forehead. <laughs> yeah. uh, on purpose? Uh, or? Uh, I mean, uh, you know, uh, well, we come after with my history of yeah. like red cards and everything. So was that your first one in English football? My first red card. Yeah. No, I had few in uh, Warhol because I <laughs> was already. Brought a few. A few. <laughs> <laughs> I think I got sent off uh, two or three times at Warhol. Yeah, yeah. Uh, which uh, not very proud, but. Yes, living your lamb. <laughs> living your lamb. So I this. presume you was out for a long time then with this. Yeah, so this I I broke my arm on the sixth of October, and uh, two thousand eighteen. Yes, uh, that was uh, I remember the date because it was my sister's birthday, oh. and I call her and it's like happy birthday. I have broke my arm. <laughs> <laughs> happy birthday! <laughs> <laughs> oh, what a birthday present! Uh, um, so yeah, uh, it was a, a long. It was kind of like four or five months like recovery you know because uh you mean if you were out out with player i think we'd come back quicker Longer, but yeah. we keepers we need to <laughs> use our hands mm -hmm. <laughs> so yeah uh, we just made uh, I, I i finished that season still uh but we couldn't make uh, to the playoffs um and um next season uh it was uh a very good season for me again uh with Worthing. we just uh started playing and uh we, I think in, in the second season, we we didn't make to the playoffs, but we were like very, very close, you know. And um, f few clubs, they already have interested on me at that point because mm -hmm. they start like seeing like what I, I was capable of and everything. Mm -hmm. And um, I moved to Turkey. 
Talking. Southwest. Yeah. Cool, we yeah. got some memories from Torquay. And they were in the National League at that point, right? <laughs> National League at that point. So you jumped up two divisions mm-hmm. there yeah. to put yeah. yourself up to top. Oh, very good. Yeah. Wow. Right. And obviously a very big club, you yeah. know, pushing at the time, I imagine, for, for league football, right? Yes. Uh, so the first year, it was the year of uh, when COVID hit, mm-hmm. you know, and uh, no one knew what was going to happen because we didn't finish that season. Like, because it was uh, February, March or something. Mm-hmm. March, yeah. Yeah. March. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So they just did like a system of like points or something points like this. Game, yeah. yeah. And uh, again, we just like an eighth or, or or ninth or something, just like out a little bit of the playoffs. But we were like in a good run, mm-hmm. so we consider it to be like getting to the playoffs. Yeah. If it was not just this system of points that yeah. at that time. And so that year was just like COVID, you know, like mm-hmm. everyone was just like mm-hmm. training at home. Mm-hmm. Like, it did was, you go back to Brazil for that? I, I did. I yeah. did go back to Brazil. Mm-hmm. Uh, Gary Johnson was uh, my manager at the time. Mm-hmm. And uh, I, I was speaking with him. Mm-hmm. And funny enough, he was like, Lucas, it's uh, COVID. You want to travel to Brazil? Mm-hmm. You know that <laughs> you cannot travel. Uh, mm-hmm. You need to be in your own bubble. You, like, you need to be just like Yeah, of there. course. Yeah. yeah. But I showed the map of Brazil and they're yeah. like, look, this is my city. Like yeah. I showed like all the reports, it's be like yeah. yeah, all the reports. Like, listen, uh, we have like the average like person that dies is like I don't know, like mm-hmm. now the numbers, but it was really low at the time. Yeah. So what he did, he's like, okay, uh, I'll give you like uh, this weeks off because we're not gonna be training anyway. So we can, you can go. And uh, at the time, I, I was with my my ex partner, and she said like, "I can I go with you." Mm-hmm. And uh, <laughs> she said like, "When I think two days before the flight, she said, no, nah, I'm not. I'm not going. I'm not going." She was just like panicking too much, like because <laughs> of COVID and everything. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and, uh, ended up going alone. Uh, I stayed there for four weeks. Uh, it was good to see my family again, mm-hmm. uh, and uh, it was it was kind of different because when I go back to Brazil, is I'm from from the south, so it's um, cold, mm-hmm. and when here is summertime, there is winter time. Mm-hmm. So when I get uh, here, the summer vacations, mm-hmm. there is winter. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I you never get any sun. Never, summer never summer. get sun. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm, I'm, yeah, I know. Uh, I'm pale now. Me uh, too. Uh, I'm much more dark. Much more darker. Yeah, me, much more darker. <laughs> <laughs> I'll take you to Tanha. Yeah. Right. <laughs> it's not the one for these for these lights, I think. Uh, <laughs> yeah. So we we came back. And um, we we start training just a little bit. Uh, I was going to the park with other goalkeepers uh, at, at Turkey, and just doing like few bits. Just like started like gradually like getting back to to that season. Uh, so you came back from COVID. Obviously, no fans. How did that progress the rest of that season? Yeah, uh, I mean, uh, we had a really good team. Like uh, the spirit of the change room. Like w- we knew that. Uh, we could achieve something that season, you know. Um, maybe if, I don't know. A uh, few of the boys they just like felt uh, less pressure playing with no crowds, you know, and then they just just end up playing better, you know, because uh, we have we had a uh, few boys coming from from the academy and then few boys coming from the academy from from Plymouth as well, mm-hmm. and uh, they were like very young but very uh, talented. So mm-hmm. I don't know how would they like. Uh, play they had a big crowd like mm-hmm. on them you know and obviously we just doing so well that season and uh, Turkey was just like um, the, the, well uh, the stadium was just like packed it was just like crazy yeah really? it was so good so good and um, I mean they just like start, start allowing funds a little bit like 50% of yeah. the capacity yeah. and then, like 70% which is like a little bit like that um, so I think the fun is like picking up and then just like our momentum just like carrying yeah, on, just carrying on, you know. Uh, we've been top of the league for quite a while uh, on, on that season. And uh, I mean, we we played uh, Sutton. Uh, Sutton uh, won the league that, that year. Uh, but we, we played against Sutton uh, at their place and we, we beat them like 1-0. Uh, it was a very good game for me and, uh, as well, uh, I remember. And um, I mean, we're just like buzzing so much when like in the change room after the game, you know, but I was just like, that's not, we had still have like few games left, yes, yeah. you know, of course. but we, we were clear, like few points, it was crazy. Like, I, I don't know, it was just like, I think it was just like maiden head, like, you know, like 
tough places to go. They were just like, yeah, it's like, tough to go to. Yeah, as well. we did that last season. Yeah, yeah. like just like dropping points, you know, and mm-hmm. then the momentum is just not as good as it was. Yeah. Like, a little bit. Yeah, yeah. They start and the pressure's coming. Yeah. Yes. They're winning games, 100%. I know. And um, yeah, it's almost better to like be breathing down someone's neck yeah. than vice versa. Yes. yes. Yeah. yeah. I think that was one of the questions of uh, Gary Johnson in one of the meetings. He was like, uh, what do you prefer, just being top of the league and someone like a second uh, breathing your neck or being second and not having the pressure? I, yeah. I think I, pr- I would prefer just being like the well, second. If you want to run... Yeah, you take second. Yeah, yeah, of course. Yeah, because then the pressure like on them yeah. exactly. Yeah, all the time. That's why it must be so tough last year. Yeah, not counting and, and Wrexham, but that's for another yeah. for another episode. Yeah. You know? Uh, so we end up second, and we're like, okay, playoffs. We we need to do our job uh, right now, you know. And uh, we got uh, on the semi final, um, Barrow. Barrow? No, mm. uh, Stockport. Yeah, so Stockport. Counting. Yeah, wow. Stockport. Stockport. Uh, we got Stockport. So the first game was uh, their place, and uh, it was 2 2, I think, the game. Mm-hmm. And they came to, to Turkey, and we were like, okay, at Turkey, we just going to do so good in here. I know. Yeah. And I think we just like had full capacity in that, in, really? at that point. At that point. Yeah, because. The place was rocking. It was incredible. Yeah. You know, it was incredible. Uh, well, I, I went there like this season. We went there, mm-hmm. and, um, and the place is so different. Like you know, like yeah. when you you seen it, like the scenes that mm-hmm. what the place can mm-hmm. can be, and then the, yeah, like, of course. Now, yeah. And I remember them uh, watching them them win the win the conference south because I was at Western at the time. Yeah, and it was mental. And then to go back this year, it was yeah. kind of, it's quite sad actually. Yeah, it is really yeah. sad. Yeah, it is. It is. It is. It is. Uh, but anyway, like I, I don't remember the the the, the game uh, how we go how we went, but maybe it was like three new or something. I like it. it was just like a good game for us, and it was like okay, we're in the final, you know. And uh, the final was in Ashton Ashton Gate, and which is right, obviously so this is the story that I've been waiting for. Maybe this is the story I've been waiting it's, for. It's at Bristol City, who is Gary Johnson's old team as well. So <laughs> yeah, he was supposed to be in Wembley at Wembley. But that final was just like, everything was just like delaying, delaying, delaying uh, because of COVID. And I think was close to international break or the Euros that, that, that year or something that England would play like two days after the final. And they, they didn't want to ruin the pitch or mm-hmm. something like this. Um, oh, that must have been gotten though. Like, because you probably were looking forward. Oh, if we make the final, it'll be at Wembley. Yeah. No yeah. disrespect to Bristol City, but it's not exactly Wembley. And <laughs> not taken. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I just remember on that week, I don't know, because we're training penalties and everything, and I'm like, I'm going to I'm gonna score a goal. I'm going to score a goal. I had that in my head. That's a crazy thought that to have as a keeper. <laughs> but, really? you know, like, as a goal, as in the penalty shootout, you know, like, uh, you're yeah, going you to penalty, like, yeah, yeah. I'm going to score a goal. But I had that in my head, you know? Mm-hmm. It's, it's crazy, because, uh, you know, when you just, like, have this just, like, uh, visualization that yeah, you just go, yeah, like, yeah. You, you know, it, you just put that, in mm-hmm. the universe and then mm-hmm. the universe just brings it back yeah well, i might start doing that with like money <laughs> yeah. And yeah nice you clothes should. you should start visualizing yeah, that you should you should <laughs> uh and uh yeah uh we got two goals disallowed that was uh from uh kyle cameron like he absolutely not disallowed like you can check it uh, again and it, w- it was crazy that i don't know what the referee was just like thinking it mm-hmm. um and we're losing one nil and it goes to the at a time uh, nine fifty minutes, and I'm like, okay, I just go <laughs> go there. It was a corner for us, and they said like uh, I might get uh, something. I I I never imagined like I would score the goal, you know. Um, and I remember we just like uh, Jake Andrews just um, cross the ball, and hits the first man, and I'm like, Jesus, uh, you've be just been. <laughs> He's just been uh, crossing this ball in the in the in the second uh, post like all the time, and then like now he just like hit the front man, you know. Um, so Armani Lito just uh, so the front man just like had it out for for a throw in, and Ar- Armani Lito just get the ball, play it quick. Player, by the way. Yeah, serious yeah, player. Yeah, play it quick uh, to Jake, and I'm outside of the box, and I'm like, oh, this ball is coming again, you know. Let me just get back. So in yeah, uh, Jake. Uh, clip the ball, and then I'm like looking at, um, 
wow, we goalkeepers and have a good timing, you know, like mm -hmm. a good leap at least, you know. Um, so I'm looking at, looking at, I'm just going to get contact on this, you know, like something is going to happen. Yeah. I, I never imagined it was going to go, you know. <laughs> Such a good story. So I just go, head it. And I just look at, and then the ball is just going in slow motion, like, you know. <laughs> and I'm like, oh my days, I don't know how even to celebrate. <laughs> I was going to say, like, did you even, can you even remember what went through your head? Oh, yeah. Oh. So it was like, the smile just going there, there, yeah. you know. Like, the, the, give me the chills every time. That, like, in a playoff final, right at the end, but like, wow. Yeah. That is such a good, good moment, you know. That's my like, career, isn't it, Lucas? Yeah, yeah. I like that. So career. But it's funny. It's I actually, count. I remember watching that in the States. And that's, football is crazy. Now wow. I live with the guy. But I remember that seeing scored. it. I it went viral. It, yeah. I remember seeing yeah, it. Yeah, that's how but I saw it But I never it well. knew it was like, the day I met you, I never went, oh, that's the fella that scored for Torquay <laughs> in the play. <laughs> I, I actually watched it live. I remember watching it live at my house. Wow. Yeah, wow. it was at Ashton Gate mad. as well. It was wow. crazy. And that was our first ever guest. So that was just at the time, like 96, 97th minute. And yeah, I scored and then I'm like, I'm so buzzing. I'm like, what just happened in here, you know? Uh, and do you know when it, you have to talk to yourself to bring yourself down? Because, yeah. you know, like... You still not have like a two fifteens to play. You could drop a yeah. howler or something, yeah. Yeah. and then that moment's just gone. Yeah, yeah. So we have like two fifteens to play. Uh, I mean, nothing was uh, going on at the time. I, I just don't remember what happened those two fifteens, <laughs> uh, and uh, it came to the penalty shootout, and I'm like, okay, uh, me and the the goalie coach at the time, we studied like every like penalty taker, and we we put like in a bottle like mm -hmm. you know like uh, every yeah, keeper yeah. just mm -hmm. have like <laughs> that uh paper in the bottle now like oh he goes left he goes right like you know um so we had this and uh i said to the boys like listen i'm gonna save at least you mm -hmm. you just do your job you know and they're like yeah yeah so everyone is like so confident so confident so i saved the first one and um then you're right uh he 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 hits the bar mm -hmm. yeah he hits the bar and then i'm like okay no one scored so yeah. we still we still the game mm -hmm. i go like save the second one and then like i didn't realize uh, it was two in a row yeah first two as well yeah buzzing like buzzing and then uh billy waters went to take it slips <laughs> no out yeah miles yeah Ah, oh, my days. And then just like, he goes, I go, stand, uh, they score, they score, they score. Yeah. Like, and then we missed um, uh, one, one, and um, we just lose. But you didn't end up taking a penalty. I didn't end up taking a penalty. No. Didn't need uh, to. Yeah. yeah. But that must have been a real bittersweet moment because I can imagine your phone must have blown off. It was. But then, yeah. Well, we just lost the playoff final. Yeah. Uh, I mean? So it was like a mix of emotions. It yeah. was just a. Uh, crazy to think about it to be honest because mm -hmm. i went to the changing room everyone was just like sad you know like and uh, and, and gary johnson was just like he was not mad at no one at the yeah. point like the season has finished yeah. you know um everyone just sad for everything mm -hmm. and i no just one's talking about your goal yeah, you know, <laughs> was just like, about the goal. It, 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 it was crazy because everyone was just like sad to lose the game, you know. Yeah. And um, I just remember going to the pitch after. I just like, well, uh, Gary Johnson was speaking and then all the lads were speaking. And then I just had a moment. Uh, I need to have a moment for myself like yeah, again, you know. So I just went there like and just like thinking about yeah. it. And then the first thought was, did I do it enough in this game? Really? Yeah. Save two pens. And but score. that's what I mean. That yeah. I feel like it goes that's, back to your mindset yeah. though and your yeah. standards. Is, it's it's crazy. I think you got to have that mindset in order to go up levels. <laughs> yeah, you have to. Yeah. And it's, it's shown in your satisfied. career as to why you've had the career you've had. Yeah. It's because you've got that mindset. You yeah. Know? Well, speaking of going up levels, that was your last game with Turkey, wasn't it? Yes. Yeah. yeah. That was the last game. And uh, a few weeks after, I signed for Port Vale. Yeah, League Football two. League. Football league, so I didn't go special. with Turkey uh, to the football league, but I went to Port Vale <laughs> in, in League in League Two. two. Yes, yeah, yeah, as uh, wow. as a number one. Uh, so that year we had the COVID on the twentieth of June. Uh, 
because we had COVID, so the final was on the 20th of June. Mm -hmm. Uh, it was so late. Yeah. Yeah, so, so late. And then the season of uh, League Two would start like uh, the preseason would start like at the beginning of July. Mm -hmm. So I would have like two weeks off, but I had to move all my stuff from like Turkey mm -hmm. to Stoke. And, and some distance as and well. And some distance, yes. Um, For how long is that? I reckon it's like four hours. No, 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 it's longer, longer than that. Yeah, longer. Than yeah. It's about yeah, Stokes for size, but you found it's about six hours. Stokes near Manchester, no? Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Good. I was gonna say that with real confidence. Then. Yeah. Um, and uh, the guy at the time said, "Lucas, take more weeks off because mm -hmm. if you wanna go to Brazil, you can go mm -hmm. to Brazil." And I remember that Brazil was on the red list, so we couldn't travel. Uh, well, we could travel, but when you come back, you need you to have get. like a two weeks oh, quarantine. quarantine. Yeah. yeah. And I'm like, I can't afford to have two weeks quarantine when I yeah. come back. Yeah. So I just stayed in England. And I basically live in the dream, like on the league club. Mm -hmm. uh, my wages were just like, it's so good. <laughs> 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 like money, though. Uh, yeah. So. He'll touch that Port Vale money when he turns 65. <laughs> 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 so, yeah, uh, living in a nice house. And uh, from that, Things that started going down, I started getting depressed. Really? Yeah. So do you know the autocritical point of being so perfectionist? I think that was something that really affectively affected on me, like really negative. Really? You know? Yeah. Um, and it was at the point which I was scoring the goal in the playoff final, having that hyped moment that I couldn't replicate that anymore. You that Ty feeling. Tyson Fury said the exact same thing yeah. as to why he went into depression. Yeah, it's when once he beat, yeah. When he beat Klitschko, 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 he had that high and he couldn't find something to reach that high again. Yeah. And he just... Yeah. I was actually trying yeah. to think of mm -hmm. the example. Yeah. I remember hearing that from another... Mm. It's, it's funny him. you yeah. say yeah. that, Lucas. Yeah. So I think that was the trigger of like, I'm in a such good place. Yeah. The club is so good. Yeah. Like... I have everything to work with mm -hmm. just to progress on my football, mm -hmm. just on my career. And I just threw away. Mm -hmm. It was crazy. Like, I, 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 I don't know. Did it you was... ever go and see a, a professional about yeah, that? Yeah, so uh, it got to the point which I, I was just going to the gym so much that I started being so hinge mm. yeah you know huge yeah hinge brother just dropped hinge. a dating app <laughs> <laughs> so that hinge. is so cold so hinge. yeah i've always been tinder <laughs> <laughs> so yeah it started being like uh big and um uh the assistant coach at the time said like because is there something that because they st like we weight ourselves like mm -hmm. every single day and uh, obviously my my wages Just like start mm -hmm. going up 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 and um things i was not just like quite happy like you know like i was playing games like i played half of the season and um, i was not enjoying football it was crazy like it was a, such a good place but Again, I couldn't enjoy more because the goal was such a hype at moment yeah. that I couldn't replicate that feeling anymore. Mm -hmm. You know, we're winning games and everyone mm -hmm. was buzzing. Mm -hmm. And then here I was after the game, actually watching the clips. Oh, this kick should have been two inches this way. Not that, you know, like, so I was so out of critical myself. Mm -hmm. And then like that led into injuries because I was going to the pitch and trying to overtraining, 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 overtraining and going to the gym saying like, uh, you know, uh, your kick is not going long enough. So just like battering the legs, battering like the arms, just like to be like huge, I don't know. And uh, it started picking up injuries, so obviously, because uh, the mind was tired. Mm -hmm. uh, I couldn't sleep at night, you know, mm -hmm. just like being so harsh on myself in every single training session, every uh, every play. And uh, I had a back injury and that was just like my body saying, you can't Shutting down always. do yeah. anymore, yeah. like, yeah, you know. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, the system manager spoke with me and then he said, Lucas, is there something wrong with you right now, blah, blah, blah. And I just decided to come clean with him and say like, yeah, uh, I, 
I am bad. I'm in a bad place. Like I'm, I'm depressed. Like I just want to go home and then stay in my room, like just watch Netflix, just being uh, playing PlayStation and then doing nothing else. Cause I, I'm not enjoying like life at the moment, you know? And I just remember like crying, like in front of him, like, you know, and uh, he's saying like, uh, can I pass up like your name into the, the PFA? And I said like, yeah, cause I needed, I needed help at the time. And I remember the PFA contact me, like if not the same day, like in the next day, they say, Lucas, like, uh, how are you doing? Blah, blah, blah. And so we started speaking it. And like in two or three days after I already had like someone to talk with. So a psychologist that I just been speaking with like loads. And then it was a long process just to build myself again you know uh obviously on on that part as well i started being much more aggressive on the pitch and then started picking up more red cards and mm -hmm. more red cards you know like mm -hmm. i was not myself it was mm -hmm. it was crazy it, it, you know uh um, that's where the breathing technique started that was the breathing technique started <laughs> yes uh i've seen him doing it on the pitch sometimes so on, <laughs> so on stood on his toe and he's there <laughs> yeah i think lucas were playing <laughs> yeah so, yeah, so uh, that's the new Lucas now. Yeah. <laughs> you don't want to wake up the monster anymore. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Leave him there like sleeping, you know? <laughs> I remember you first telling me that, like when we first started living together. And I was I was shocked that like someone who's very happy, go lucky, just yeah. a very positive voice around the changing room. Obviously, like when we you're very critical of yourself, yeah. but just to have such like a a dark period for yourself, I never would have guessed it. And it wasn't like even that that long ago. Yeah, you know? I know. Uh, so the process was with the uh, Port Vale that uh, I seen the psychiatrist and uh, and the psychologist. Uh, that was long. So at the end of the season, I start uh, coming back into trainings because then the body just allowed me again just to start training again because I think the mind is just such a, a powerful thing, you know, because uh, you, you go into a mindset that you are uh, so down, down, down in that moment that your body is just like, saying like you, you your injuries is just gonna pick up with your mind you know and um when my mind was just like getting better my body just started getting better you know yeah so i start training again and um it was a um, successful season at the end because uh, we at the end went to Wembley and uh, won. <laughs> Picked up this the, lovely is, uh, yeah. bottle. Uh, yeah. uh, wow. There is the trophy that uh, we the got. the main camera there. Ooh, yes. Wow. Here. <laughs> that's my trophy. Uh, we are going up and that's uh, the playoff final of uh, League Two. So did, we went to me, League One. Did that replicate that moment by any chance? Was it close to that moment of scoring uh, in the playoff for Torquay? No, he really, didn't. yeah, he didn't. But, but I presume it was still a really special day. It and was something that you look it, back on it. Your I career. think it was much more special because for all that they came through in that season, mm -hmm. and yeah, uh, of course, one hundred percent. And I remember lifting the trophy to the fans and everything, and then I couldn't stop crying like I can as imagine. a baby, as a baby. I can but imagine. It was not more for the happiness that was there, but for the things that I went through that season, mm -hmm. you know? And mm -hmm. um, again, to to come and uh, be successful like with the team and uh, I was part of it. So mm -hmm. um, for more, I, I played half of the season, you, you know? Uh, so I I know that was a, a, a big part of, on, on that um, um, promotion side. Mm -hmm. um, so very happy, <laughs> but uh, again, um, Next season comes, so I signed two years at Port Vale, and uh, I got a message that they they were not interested to to keep me there, mm -hmm. and I was sent on loan to Chesterfield, and uh, I said, okay, I'm gonna pick up myself again because uh, Chesterfield's an amazing club and uh, huge club, yeah, massive. Just been promoted, just been promoted, yes. Well, uh, yeah. Congratulations, yeah, <laughs> congratulations. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and um, I just been. Uh, uh, so happy to sign it for for a big club again, you know, to get an opportunity to to show myself. And again, uh, I was doing well right at the beginning of the season, and I pick up an injury. In oh well, my first game for Chesterfield, <laughs> being sent off. 
<laughs> was it against oh, Dawkins? Against Dawkins. Do you Dorkin. know, he stamped yes. on my friend, Ryan Seager. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. <laughs> well, Some I, say he had it coming. <laughs> <laughs> so, for what I thought that was that in my past, something was not right still, you know. Mm -hmm. And, uh, yeah, the first game of the season uh, sent off. And again, I started working with a psychiatrist at the, at the time uh, that uh, Chesterfield uh, provided. And that was when the breathing techniques came. Ah. So, mm -hmm. you know, uh, that was uh, uh, Paul, that was the name of the guy. Uh, he, he just um, teaching me like all these techniques that I could use it when someone is just starting like, let's say, uh, making me angry in the game or I see some injustice, uh, you know, so that I could uh, apply those techniques. And, and do you, do you strongly myself. recommend them as well? Oh yeah, um, really? I mean, just uh, for viewers that, yeah, I think we like uh, to educate as well. Yeah, so. I think uh, the people that are watching us and then listening to us that uh, are in, in in dark moments mm -hmm. and uh, if I can speak up for a little a little bit and then just uh, saying that go and seek help because mm -hmm. that's just gonna bring you back to life, you mm -hmm. know. Because mm -hmm. I was in a really really bad place and then I I really don't want to be in that place anymore you know because as, as connor said like i'm just like so such a happy guy and then yeah. like a, the brazilian blood will run yeah, in the yeah, veins yeah. you know so i'm dancing everywhere yeah. so you know like I, I i i never thought that i would hit depression you, mm. you know so again um i, I chat a few who just go in into uh into the league and then uh gaffer said like lucas i knew that uh you had this like red mist, so we trust you again. Like you're not gonna do again, uh, so we we're gonna keep playing you, and that's why I did. Uh, Paul Cook just uh, we've been playing, and I and that's how, and that's where you developed the the Scouse accent as well. <laughs> yeah, from Chesterfield with Paul Cook and all the Scouses. Yeah, <laughs> yeah there are lots of Scouses. There, yeah. Uh, so yeah, I pick up an injury uh, on on my left ankle and. Um, there was four or five five months to just to get back, you know, and uh, mm -hmm. um, they got a new keeper in uh, Ross, and he was just doing so well for for the team. It was just like so good to get to be back. You found it hard, obviously, to get back. Yeah, mm -hmm. and obviously, uh, I was uh, part of the team that uh, went went to Wembley again. Mm -hmm. So it's my third year going to <laughs> the final. <laughs> hey, hey, that, hey, that's. Good step for us, See? isn't it? Hopefully, we yeah. Can yeah. <laughs> Imagine the fourth year Perfect. going to a final. Yes. There you go. See? Wow. So the thing is, I lost the first one. I win the second one. Then I lost the third one. Oh, and then we've now, done it. <laughs> <laughs> we've done it. Yeah. 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 Uh, so so yeah, uh, we lost in the in the playoff final um, uh, against Notts County. We did like. A, unbelievable season i think they they, they deserved it yeah. that year anyway that incredible. Uh, mm -hmm. you know uh so guys just for transparency uh lucas had an appointment to go to so he's rushed off there and <laughs> we've come back an hour later so if you've <laughs> noticed anything that's changed about the set or anything obviously my hair yeah listeners be should be all good but i've had my hood up for the last half an hour we've eaten my I've, had a, I've had a nap i have I've, I was on break. He's always, <laughs> having, he's always having a nap. What do you mean? Another break. The most strange thing, actually, we, the viewers will come to know. Breaks. I love yeah. the breaks. The most annoying thing is that we haven't. We've tried not to move the camera, so none of us have been on our phones for the last hour. I've been lost. I've been actually reading. Oh, wow. Well, a new book. You might That's have incredible. noticed as well. Like I was really watching that clock for the last ten minutes of the episode. <laughs> or, well, last ten minutes that we were talking in the first part of the episode. Like, oh my god, we got to keep things going. Then I was like. We're not going to talk about Maidstone, are we? <laughs> <laughs> and I think we were having so much fun listening to Lucas' story that we didn't want to rush anything. Yeah. Which is uh, which is why we decided to quickly pop back an hour later. Mm. Beth actually isn't home yet, um, but that could be interesting when she Clock gets here because she actually doesn't know we're doing this. So <laughs> it's gonna be it's gonna be a surprise yeah. when she sees the thumbnail. That it's just it's <laughs> living room. It's just kind of here, like. <laughs> and when we hear the slam on the door, we know that she's oh, yeah. home. Yeah, Ooh, that's right. Angry but anyway, Beth. Lucas, we we're on. I think we've just mentioned that you've gone back to back to back playoff finals. So we're hoping that we'll we get can, another one. Yeah, exactly. That'd be be excellent mm. for us. Yes. Um, talk us through how you uh, originally signed for Maidstone, how it all came about. 
Yeah, so, you know, uh, I had this uh, summertime and uh, I was training with uh, Chesterfield, uh, doing my um, uh, preseason over there uh, just to get fit. So I didn't know, I, I know that I was not going to sign for Chesterfield again. And I was just waiting for for opportunity to <laughs> to sign to another team. Um, it was quite hard because it was just like late and the season was just going to start. And I, I had no team, so... I was like, okay, uh, I was uh, with my partner, Ian, at the time. And then I was like, we might need to go for uh, a trip in Europe. Like, we just get the car and then just go, yeah, you know? Yeah, so, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Jana was guided when you signed for me, so. Yeah. <laughs> she goes, oh, what the hell? <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, everything happens for a reason. Mm -hmm. And uh, it happened so quick as well, because... I was at home and then I, I need to move my things out from uh, the home that I had in Chesterfield. Mm -hmm. And um, uh, I was moving things down here, Worthing, mm -hmm. uh, uh, Patrick, uh, a friend of mine. And Gideon. <laughs> yeah. oh, Gideon. What, Gideon. What a guy. What a nice guy, man. <laughs> yeah. What a geezer. Yeah. Pat, Pat. Well, shout out, Pat. So, yeah, yeah. And I had to move the things out from uh, Chesterfield. And the uh, funny thing was that uh, my agent uh, at the time called me and said, like, listen, I got a team for you. And the manager wanted to speak with you. And uh, it was George Lacobi. <laughs> and uh, we spoke on uh, Wednesday. And the first game was Saturday. Yeah. He said, Lucas, uh, can you drive down, like, uh, today? Because you need to train like at least like two mm -hmm. trains to, to, to play for mm -hmm. us like on Saturday, you know? Uh, so I basically signed uh, two days before the, the season start oh, yeah. uh, for Maidstone. And uh, here we are on this happy run. And See? Maidstone and was really milking it as well. Remember like they were posting the, post. the number one, but they wouldn't show who it was. Yeah. And, but yeah. wasn't there something like leaked or something? Someone clocked nope. onto it. It the was gloves. Lucas. Yeah, they Someone went through gloves. the gloves in the boot combo. Yeah, and they yeah. found out they knew exactly who you were. Oh, wow. Which yeah, is actually meant to yeah. yeah. And Shout also, out for my sponsors. Uh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> hey, hey, bloody. Hey, hey, so the sponsors. <laughs> hey, listen, no you're the they, 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 they want to sponsor me as well. I'm yeah. not the goalkeeper. <laughs> it was, it was <laughs> golden training today. <laughs> <laughs> but actually, we'd actually met you before in Dublin on our Christmas do. Yes. Which is a, which is a bit yes. random. Well, that yeah. I'd bumped into you before. Me and Connor wasn't there. In passing. And then all of a sudden, well, we're in the same bar for the whole day on the Sunday in Dublin. And then you're actually signing for a team. It's, it's crazy. Yeah. See, we enjoying ourselves over there. You won't go into too much details about, about uh, that, but yeah, yeah, that wasn't Christmas good old there. Brilliant, isn't it? Yeah, I'm unbelievable. Oh. And then just talk us through. Obviously, this season's been been unbelievable for for Maystone. I mean, again, I think the the environment that we're in, like the group of the lads, is just mm -hmm. like unbelievable. Now, so we is such an enjoyable <laughs> environment that you want to do well for everyone, you know, because mm -hmm. it's not just like for yourself. Cause obviously, you're going to do well for yourself, but then helping everyone along on the way. Mm -hmm. And I think that was the spirit of like the run after that FA Cup, especially, you mm -hmm. know, because um, everyone was there on on the day and uh, brought their like a game to the day to be Ipswich. Like that was the, the, that was the game for us, you mm -hmm. know, but the family that we've been building, like the the, the units, is not just like on the pitch, it's like outside mm -hmm. as well. So mm -hmm. it's, it's, yeah. it's crazy. Like Coffee the, clubs. Yeah, yeah. Like everything, yeah. everything. And so. we mentioned that before, like we are just so close because so many yeah. people have moved from different places yes. that when you all get on in the change room, mm -hmm. just all of a sudden it just makes you so much closer yeah. off the pitch as well. And yeah. in our spare time, we hang out so much that it just, I think it is starting to show on the pitch or has shown this season. Yeah. That's why... That extra percent, like uh, those little marginal gains, yeah. is really affected everything on the yeah, field. Yeah, I know. And yeah. everyone cares for, for for each other. And then what happens on the pitch is just like on the pitch. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm I'm having a go at you because I want you to do better, and I know you can do better. Mm -hmm. Because if you do better, it's gonna be better for me as well. Exactly. Mm -hmm. So I mean, like the, the run that we did, like uh, on the FA Cup, was just like uh, you got oh. some nice memorabilia uh, to show yeah. for it as well. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah so show that as well in the main shot. Ooh. We'll take a little uh, screenshot of that as well. <laughs> yeah, that was the <laughs> player of the match uh, against Ipswich uh, for me. 
It was a very, very special day. Yeah. Uh, obviously, uh, everyone saw me crying after the game. Did you? But you didn't have any family. Yana wasn't there, was she? No, no, she was in a competition in the. Oh, well, we didn't Yana. actually mention this as well. That yeah, so, yeah. Yana, Yana is yeah. a fencer. And yeah. Your mum was a fencer. Yeah, so Yana is my partner. That mm -hmm. people doesn't know. Uh, was the Maidstone posh and Bex, wasn't it? That, yeah, that, that, was the <laughs> that was the title. I was reading the Daily Mail one morning, and I was like, if I don't see his face enough, it's in the headlines as well. <laughs> <laughs> what so, an article that was. So yeah, so class. Cool. Yeah. yeah, so yeah, she was in the um, uh, where she was at the time. Um, was it Qatar? It was in Qatar, yes. Yeah, she was in Qatar. So she was in, oh no, it probably was. Uh, no, Saudi, Saudi, Arabia, Arabia. Saudi, Arabia. Saudi Arabia. Yeah, Saudi so Arabia. she was in Saudi Arabia and uh, she couldn't attend to the game, but she said, like, I definitely come to the next one. Mm -hmm. And yeah, she was there at Coventry and everything. But she's the bad luck charm, then. She was the bad yeah. luck. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, but anyway, yeah, it was, so, it was so special for me, and uh, I know again is this. Uh, I, I was crying at the end because it was such a good game for everyone, mm -hmm. but especially for me, like uh, I did like an, an amazing game. Like uh, I'm, I still go back and then uh, go in at my autocritical self and say like, uh, really? yeah, obviously, like go like, oh that kick. Uh, it was not exactly what I wanted, you know, right. like this save should be like a little bit different. Like even when um, Duku had it out from, from the, from the corner kick, mm -hmm. I, in that moment I said like, oh, this ball could be mine, you know, but mm -hmm. then it led to a goal. Yeah. Like you see like those small moments that you just like go on it. <laughs> so obviously being released from Chesterfield, obviously let go from Port Vale as well. Yeah. Having such a good FA Cup run where you only conceded one against Barrow and the goal was a, a fluke, like a little bit of a mistake. Keeping a clean sheet against Stevenage, League One, and then having this man of the match performance, obviously must just feel great for you and almost you feel like, oh, you know what? I, I can get back to those levels yeah, and can yeah. get back to those teams. I yeah, I think that's why at the end of the game it was just like uh, crying. It was just like very good, you know, because he was kind of uh, putting the seal again, saying like... Uh, Listen, I'm back, you know, because uh, I've, I've I just did my 50th game to for Maidstone like uh, la uh, last week, and uh, you know I, I can't remember the last time I, I I played that many games in in one season, and um, I don't think I got any any cards. <laughs> so, <laughs> so um, do they do they do cards at Maidstone? I think they do it for a hundred. Uh, oh, well, yeah, no, I think it is on because I already no, no, Fowler, sorry, got, sorry. Fowler got a football, right? And no, like sorry, you mean as in yellow cards? Yellow red cards. cards, yes. I thought you meant as in like memorabilia, oh. like, yes. I'm gonna say, where's my so, card? <laughs> yeah, so I don't, I don't think I've no been cards. booked, yeah. No, um, time wasting once, surely. Maybe once yeah. I've, been, I've been booked. So I think I'm proud of myself for, on good, that one. Yeah. Progress. Think, yeah, you see, yeah, <laughs> there's a progress in there, and uh, you know, uh, I, I feel good mentally. I'm, I'm in a happy place so you know what like when you go and work in a happy place you just of course. you can do much much better you know easier, yeah, yeah everything yeah. just like goes easier and more natural you know so and when you, you got Connor clean enough it. after you <laughs> in our spotless apartment Jeez, I'll tell you what I thought I was clean before living with you bro uh, Jesus Christ I, I don't know what you've done to me but I can see dirt from a mile away now just see, like you yeah. the thing good. is Connor has taken one for the team for us because he's now going to owe you a lot of deep cleans because of this because of this podcast uh -uh, so. I said when we were talking about getting Lucas on I was like you boys better come clean the apartment <laughs> as a thank you hey well Bob or I'll, get you. Three of us. I'll get Rose round <laughs> Ian and Rose can you're, come round you're on tidied up duty after this by the way I don't know about you've that done mate. nothing Ooh. for the past brother you've been talking about your breaks episodes. the whole time and now you're gonna put me on clean up duty we have it all on 4K <laughs> the, the breaks are st strategic <laughs> you didn't to say that word. <laughs> As I went to say that, I went, Sam, what are you doing? <laughs> <laughs> You're not the philosopher, brother. <laughs> but uh, no, seriously, you're on clean up. Uh, yeah, but no, I have to say, bro, like, uh, personally, living with you and, and getting to spend a lot of time with you, you, uh, you have taught me so much about yeah. being a professional. I think mm -hmm. you've just been such a good example in our change room in, in general. You're always... I mean, you and I go in always first, and you're always the last one after matches. I know Ian and Rose get so mad because he still has his <laughs> kit on once everyone else is left and, you know, doing the ice baths. But you've really, and I'm not trying to big you up too Sounds much. Sounds to yet. me as if you're trying to soften him up before yeah. I just don't he wanna, tells you to clean up. I just don't want to clean anymore. <laughs> I was going to say. But uh, no, it's, I have to say, you've been just an absolute pleasure to like nice. learn from and, and so glad that we've got you on the pod for the first no, time. But I want uh, one last question. A piece of advice 
for an aspiring keeper or or, or footballer? Yeah, I think a piece of the advice is just something that uh, Gary Johnson told me as well, which is, I love that sentence, which is, uh, be ready to be lucky. So you never know when your luck is going to come mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. you just got to be ready. So... Hey, you work I every. I actually do. That's my favorite saying. <laughs> I love that saying. That's my favorite saying. <laughs> yeah. So no, I really like that. You, you do need to work hard on yourself. Like you do need to be the best of yourself every single day because you never know who's gonna be watching you. Mm -hmm. So you gotta be ready to be lucky. There we go. Wow. Yeah. I think that's, that's a perfect uh, way to to end the pod, Lucas. Uh, it, is, it has been an absolute pleasure. Thank I you, the first it. guest. Nah, it was so good to, yeah, to honestly, be here with you guys. It, it was just. And I said it to the boys as well when we had our little break, when you had to go to whatever you had to do. But uh, that was just, I had so much fun listening to no, you. No, it was so good, bro. Oh, it was really great. appreciate It's one of those, we, we've all heard a lot, like what we thought was a lot of your story. Yeah. Yeah. There was so much we hadn't heard. Yeah, yeah. literally. We went into debt with it and everything. Like, I tried so. to go as quick as well, going into <laughs> yeah. the stories as well, I, you know. We did a little documentary. <laughs> yeah. 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 <laughs> nah, but uh, what a... What a net, boys. What a story. What a great first guest to, to have on. Well, uh, thank you very much, guys, for, for tuning in. Mm -hmm. I hope you've enjoyed it as much as we have, and I'm sure you have. And, uh, yeah, be sure to like, comment, subscribe, share it to someone. Make sure your friends are listening. And just like we said before, we appreciate all your support. Mm -hmm. And uh, we're hopeful to get guests nearly as good as Lucas, because I don't know if they'll be able to <laughs> challenge put him. the standard yeah. high. Yeah. We've very, set the bar very, very high. Very high. So uh, let us know anyone you want to, to see on the pod and we'll try our best to get on. And uh, yeah, see you in the next one.